Hello, 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 everybody. Hi. Is this thing on? Hello, hello, hello. Check, hello. check, Can you hear us? We're coming in from a new place. Do you know what this new place is? What? Where? Me casting with you. Woo! It's Fluke and Pangu. First time. I don't I, look like... Yeah, it's first time. I've just run... Yeah, yeah. We have never cast together before. Yet. Yet. I was in a very sticky situation beforehand. What? Why? What happened? No reason. No, re <laughs> no reason. Something mysterious. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> anyway, I wasn't running back, so I haven't done the back-to-back -back games. This is the only time this has happened yeah. throughout the whole tournament, apart from later on today with Hap. I was on the back-to-back -back situation, and here I am now. I didn't have to run back from eating food. <laughs> Uh, and we find ourselves going Dark Zero versus NIP. I promise I will cool down and calm down in just a second. Cafe, club, consulate is the map band that we're going for. Interesting. So it's actually going to be a, a new starting map for both teams here. Neither NIP or Dark Zero played Cafe yesterday. It was club for both teams. Um, and then, of course, Skyscraper for NIP, whereas Dark Zero played consulate and Nighthaven Lab. So new territory. There has been a lot of talk about NIP's map pool not being all that significant, all that big throughout this, uh, well, the last couple of years. So the further into the tournament NIP will go, the more they will be affected by their small map pool. Whereas Dark Zero with two new players, they're coming in thinking, okay, no one knows exactly what to expect from DC with Nathan Bolo, but they had a pretty good first start to things yesterday. I think that's the sort of split here as well. Obviously with G2 being able to get the result and the response earlier on in the day, they found themselves sitting kind of pretty now. Two wins for the team, for the roster. There is a lot of pressure here because if DZ get themselves a little bit further along on the board, get themselves towards the top end of it, then you've suddenly got this difference. You've got this chasm in the middle of the group. Not only does it make it harder to claw your way out of that bottom spot, but also makes it harder to claw your way into the top two, into the missions where you get yourself into the upper bracket because it's not just about not going home, it's also about the seeding, the extra life to play through the whole uh -oh. thing and uh oh, uh oh, Can Canadians causing problems. Oh man, you try just had to say something there, oh you got the wrong sides. Well, quick rehost, we're back. Of course, starting sides are very important. One team will pick the map, the other team will pick the starting side. You want to start where you choose, right? That's logic. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the sort of... This is the most serious competition. This is the top echelon. You know it better than probably many people. No, Fabian knows better, right? He's got three hammers. Well, Fabian isn't technically working yet, so... Oh, but he is here. He is and here. And I hate the fact that he's just next to us all day. He had a, um, a, a fight with Fresh in the dressing room <laughs> yesterday. A tickle war. Physical, physical altercation <laughs> yep. took place between the two players. Uh, and we have an investigation underway. <laughs> an internal investigation. Yeah, let's just say that one of those two people were on the floor and the other one was on top of the guy on the floor. It was, it was funny. <laughs> Sorry, man. Uh, who tw Fox tweeted a photo of it, I think? It might have been, yeah. There has been a, a, a retweet of it. We are just having a rehost to get the size together. So I cast NIP yesterday. Okay. Uh, I cast them in their loss towards G2. Technically, they got less rounds against G2 than Firex did today. Day. They did, yeah. But I think it was a, a different G2 that they went up against. I think G2 were very driven. Yesterday, they were playing some of their A strats. Not that they weren't playing well today, but it was a lot more rest back. It was, we don't need to entirely sweat ourselves out. SI is a very, very long tournament. Yeah. yeah I mean, I agree with you. Like, you cannot throw everything at your opponent every single game. You got to kind of reserve your energy. If you have a quote unquote easier matchup on your way, you spend like 80% of your maximum energy capacity. And then against the harder fights, you put in more, of course. Most teams, and not all teams, will do that because, as you said, very long tournament, tournament with a lot of games to play. Now, with the sort of map setup that we have, with the fact that we're coming into Cafe as our first pick, we haven't quite had that as common as a lot of other maps, I think, so far. I don't entirely have the numbers in front of me. No. Because again, I ran from eating. A minute and a half ago, I was enjoying a delicious lemon meringue, and then I saw the message. I'm here. Panic coming. <laughs> I'm being told it's going to take a little bit longer to get the um, the server rehosted, so we're going to go for a quick break. We'll be back shortly when the game is ready.
Hello, hello, hello. We find ourselves back here after the rehost in Cafe. We are on Dostoevsky. We have Dark Zero and Nipevsky on the oh. same. On, on I, I've been learning languages. That's very fancy. Um, on the right side, they're supposed to be. The rehost is done. I've been able to sit down a little. Nice. Have a little breather. Have a little breather. Nice. I am wearing like thigh high boots. They are impossible to run in. Yeah, you did it. Yeah, I did it <laughs> twice. Twice. Look at these boots. They like, are really thigh high boots, I, yeah. And I was wearing these earlier. Parker just had his dogs out. <laughs> Not surprised. This is, a, this is like a spoiler behind the scenes look at the glamorous world of Parker's out there with his dogs out. Grim gone. Dog will be gone as well. You're looking at sort of a good range of control on the side of Cafe. I mean, it's an enjoyable map for me, but okay. I think that came from l the Latam revolution of how to attack it about a year and a half, two years ago, I think mm -hmm. it was. The, the sort of quick takes around the top floor, and then since then, top floor has massively fallen out of favor as a site. Yeah, and I mean, you, people watching might be wondering, like, why would any team ever ban Grimm? And if you go back like eight months in, in the past, you'd be like, yeah, that's kind of odd, but Grimm receives some, some buffs, you get like a wider range in the B, you get more off the mixer, they go out faster, they last for longer, and Grimm is a very crucial operator to be used specifically for that top floor take. We can just shoot in the bees from Cocktail Window Repel, get the intel, then rappel on in and take control of the bomb set itself. So seeing Grim being banned here for Cafe does make a ton of sense. Same with the Valkyrie, same with Asami, same with Dokubi. These are just stable operators that teams like to get rid of, and Dark Zero in particular, in yesterday's the game, they banned Dokubi in all three that. of the maps they played against DK. They just say, we do not care about this operator, we don't want to rely on ourselves, more importantly, we don't want our enemy to be able to play it. 
Okay, into the start of a showdown that I'm going to be entirely honest with you, my friend, I hope, is a little bit more intense than the one that I had <laughs> just before on the stream. No, we're well towards the teams, obviously, but this is two that, for all those excuses we gave of, well, it's their first game of the tournament, they're warming up into it against a team that's had that benefit. Okay, well, it's top seed sort of hammer holders versus bottom seed in the tournament. This, for me, is the brawl. This is two teams that are in good form on their day. They're in great form when they find a bit of momentum behind them. And well, they have play styles that have got them into that sort of third favorite of the region, second favorite in some people's books. Mm. It's really a potential of a proving match here between the pair of them as to who can sort of make the distance. Canadian, he's going to be messing around on the top floor with the Solus, who I feel like will get a fair run of whilst they're on the bottom cafe. Yeah, if there's one thing about Troy that we always know and love is that Paul, Solus, Valkyrie, you know, Vertical C4s, <laughs> he loves those Intel operators. And you might be thinking, but isn't Canadian like an, in an IGL support kind of guy? Yes, but no. He wants to get active on the map and make active decisions for his team. Whereas in a piece approach right now, it pretty much counters that. It's five people on the very side of the map with the Monty, for example. So you open up the main breach. You got Capital Fire, Capital Smoke, the Monty Shield. This is a very structured part of NIP where they want a very simple objective. That is the bomb site and just the bomb site. I mean, as I sort of said before, the top floor of the bar hold has fallen out of favor. The Monty is going to be the right drive through. They wanted to see if they can try and tuck the plant either behind the bomb chassis itself, which is the route they are going through onto the corner of prep. They're looking towards just the left of that A. There's a nice little pocket of space that protects the smoke canister. We'll cover this the vertical that Bolo is watching. He is the man that is going to cause the problems for this attempt. They've gone deeper. Psycho, he's popped the short wall. He's planting in an off-piece position. They've only finally got the read on it, and Psycho's going to have to go for the re-attempt on the plant. The impact have the impact they need. The kit is cold with Nate. Getting the final end of the last breath of the smoke. Cons, he's watching from the deep range, just sat as his teammate is eliminated. But when you lose a Monty, you probably know this more than others, that is plan A right out the window. Yeah, not often just plan A, but the entire game plan in itself because there isn't enough backup plan here for an IP. The capsule has used all the fire, all the smoke, same with Nomad on the air jabs and the flashbangs. It's just four guns walking around the building right now with a minute to go and you stop against one Toxic Babe, Yoko Jones, etc. So a great bait there from DC, allowing Psycho in then shutting it down. All the smoke canisters in the pockets of that crossbow gone, all the flashes as well from the pockets of Wizard gone. They just have to try and brute force this and they don't really have the option of going up for the vertical because there's only 50 seconds. They cannot full send it one way to have to fall back. So what do you try and do in this situation? I'll die, apparently. Pamper and Canadian had the watch over. At this point in the round, I'm not going to say it's an entire watch. They're charging through the Fenrir. They have to be pushed back out. With 30 seconds left, their A route is entirely an obstruction. There is no clean way, no clean path. Pino goes for the hop and is able to get the kit. Let's see if he can just get a sneaky stick on you. Assume the Solus will have a read sooner oh. rather than later. Doesn't even need to. Nafe. Hiccup that has really stepped into the surprising role of think, top KD on the team after the series yesterday. Gets his second first round. Cons has as many hit points as he does seconds left. And, well, it doesn't last much longer. A flawless opening. I mean, that's good. And with right now, like, today's style of Siege, a lot of people go, oh, it's the TDM meta. People go for kills, etc. But that was an outright beautiful round of simple mechanics like utility and intel. And just one thing in IP that didn't really check that box for was the Echo. Didn't play the IQ, probably didn't spot the Echo in the drone phase either. So they thought, you know what, the only thing that can stop us is the Toxic Babes from Nave on Smoke. If we go fast enough, the bump will go down, maybe Monty will die, but we have a very strong post from essentially outside the building. But guess what? There was an Echo to shut down the plant. That bought enough time for DC and for Nave to get the utility down, the impact grenades from buff from Canadian, and the Toxic Babes from Nave himself. And the second that Monty dies, realistically, that round is over. Of course, you can clutch, you can get some great shots, etc. Maybe the Oxio make a huge mistake somewhere, but realistically, it is technically over in that scenario. That's 1-0 now for Dark Zero. They'll just go through the motion here. They can play all four bomb sides: Bakery, Mining Reading, Library Reading, and of course, the top four. The only question is, which one will it go to in what in what order, rather? Also, what operators will they bring? The mirror is open. The pose, as I mentioned earlier, loved by Canadian. But Bolo, actually, hitting onto Doc here in the second round, like a good old rank player that he is. 
Oh, oh, I want to see. Obviously, more from. I think you always do. He could go 10 yeah. and 0, and you're like, I want to see more. Fucking Max! Because it's just exciting to watch. It, it, it's a name that's synonymous with the game. It's a name okay. where a lot of people got into our esports side because mm. of Bolo, because of his sort of legacy as the content creator, his legacy with making things entertaining to watch, and spinning his mouse, <laughs> and being fed bananas by Parker. All of these things, mm. you would say, are, are, are parts of the legacy. Crucial, yeah. Crucial to the story. Here he is on the top floor. And Cafe as a map as well, you've, you've sort of got that vertical structure. It was something NIP thought a bit before. They Try and rotate around here, but it seems they want to go for a little bit of a bottom up. The repel onto the windows there, onto dining. They've got the player on the back end of Christmas door here, wanting to put some pressure onto Canadian, but without the control of above. You can't quite get that entrance. So Psycho, as I said, bottom to top. He's about to meet a friend. Oh, and he had no idea. That is not a good start. I mean, you walk up the staircase, no drone, no intel. Just assuming that things are clear when they're not. That's not what you want to see. And speaking of Bolo, TSM, back when he was in the roster, before they kind of disappeared from the NAL, they were a phenomenal, phenomenal cafe team. So getting someone like Bolo onto DC who could implement the TSM-style strats maybe to DC to help them even further, it's only an upgrade and things get worse for NIP as Canadian finds cons as well. I mean, again, two great lockouts here. You have to look at the setup that NIP is going for. They're, they're trying to find these plays in these possible positions, but... So far, this is generally turning into the Dark Zero system. They've been able to sort of just hold. There's no one forcing DZ players out of the places they're playing. Nafe, he's still tucked. He gets a second? No, come on. come on. That really shouldn't be happening. There was just no sort of read on it. No call. You're wondering where this intel's going. You've obviously got the E1Ds, but you've also got pockets of the drones at the start of a round. Wizard is able to do some damage and get himself closer towards the site itself, but you know, three versus one with a C4, a couple of impacts, and obviously a Solus gadget where they could just go to the vertical at this point and keep some control over this. Nafe's gonna rotate his way underneath. They're repositioning, there's 40 seconds here for Wizard to try and make some magic. Yeah, and he's gonna need a lot of that magic. He's one HP, he can space you three members of DC with full health bars, and Nave is five and oh, he's looking at six kill. They are holding each other just a pixel off here. He knew, but at least he knew this time. Nate yeah. got two kills on uh, another stair set from them just not knowing. And then was able to put it together. It's all stair kills. It's all stair kills. He's a stairs player. That is a long boy. What is, what is that <laughs> that NJR has? I'm not entirely sure. It, it's some sort of... Can we go to a wide camera? What is oh, that? what is... Is that a monkey thing? I think so. But a bit of very probably. long neck. I mean, I don't know. There's a, there's a couple of nice toys as well. They're emotion. They're sentiment. Yeah, they must sent be. This is just sentimental playing monkey. So yeah, the there's a the comfy monkey that he has yeah, near him. I like that. Um, Man, I'm a bit worried for NIP here. Like, rigid attacks, and I think a big critique that analysts that will talk about right now is how you have, like, the new style of Siege, the quote-unquote split theory, and the old style, which is just called old style for some reason. And usually when you look at like, the top teams of the current trends is that the good teams can swap interchangeably in a round between the old and new style of Siege, playing split, you know, out across the map and playing close together. NIP in the first two rounds here at least, seem like they will choose one of those two styles, fully commit to it, until they lose. Like, they don't seem to be like, okay, this is not working, we gotta swap it up. They do that after a round, not during a round, so they're fully committed to this one style attack, and so far it has not worked out whatsoever. Two rounds in a row now, they go for a very limited, simplistic, very old school style attack with four or five members on a very small area of the map, and then they walk up a staircase and somehow, despite being so close together, they don't drone themselves in. They don't drone each other in. They don't have intel to act upon. The DC almost being gifted these first two rounds, in part because they're in good positions, punishing NIP, but NIP not really paying their respect or their due diligence as to what they should be doing against a formidable, formidable foe like Dark Zero. We're in a little bit of a tech pause, as you can tell, from the graphic, unless you're on a really tiny screen watching on your phone. Maybe you might not be able to work it out, but players will be back in soon enough. But in this situation, players cannot do it. What do you do in this situation? Whoa! <laughs> now you can see Whoa. it on the tiny screen. It's getting bigger! Ah. It's taking over. Can you read that, people at home? Tech pause. It's in caps, so you gotta... Tech pause! I'm not gonna shout. <laughs> I'm not gonna scream just yet. Yeah, what do you do? I mean, there's, there's, I think no matter what, 
you gotta keep the mental up, right? If you yeah. sit here and you're in IP, you lost two rounds, you can really get negative with yourself in your own mind and like let those voices do the talking. You got, ah, oh, man, we suck. This is terrible, yada, yada. The second the tech boss is over and you're not to talk again, the first thing you might say out of your mouth might be a negative critique towards your teammates would be like, guys, what are we doing? So staying in, uh, in high spirits, and I will say, DC yesterday, they were taken to the third map against GK. Not necessarily the cleanest game from them, but they look very happy throughout. And right now, DC, Troy specifically, looking very mighty happy there with the cough in his head. I mean, let's be honest, he is the king of vibes. He is he, a vibe. He really is the positive. If if G2 players are intent on like spoiling the vibes of the opponents, <laughs> Canadian is intent on raising the vibes of his team, and he puts the sort of cough on his head and laughs to himself and you you're not communicating they're not allowed to communicate mm. but you see that and you're like all right we're in good spirit yeah we're, we're having a good time here yeah I mean, and and then it carries through i mean no one no one wants to sit there right, right and whether you're winning or losing <laughs> you don't want <laughs> oh no <laughs> okay there are some complications here as into the order of what players should be joining so it's being worked out right now from the teams we're almost there you guys can't see the uh the chat on the lobby Let's just say there's a, there's a little bit of uh, fun banter. Yeah. As there always is. It's it's always like, it's like the, the biggest in-joke is the lobby chat on this screen that we, some of it you can beat. Yeah. It's not, it's not horrible. No, I don't no, want no, you, no, I don't it's want not horrible. You to, but you don't want like, because it's joking about things like, lol, this is easy, GG's, like usual gamer jokes, but it's all in good faith because everyone's friends and it's a Usually, yeah. You don't want someone to be like, how dare they teabag? The, the people who get irritated when people like teabag and stuff like that. Mm. When it's like between, what's a teabag between friends? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is a teabag between friends? This is just a big joke. Big joke? It's just, it's just a fun joke. Uh, there's the second on the stat. And again, it's just these, I'm not going to say they're off place positions because there's only really, there's two and a half staircases on this <laughs> <And> map. <half. laughs> yeah. There's a half a the stack. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, see yeah. what you mean. Round staircase doesn't quite get you all the way up, and those two huge ones either side give you to rotate, and you expect there to be pressure on them. You can see they were angling it, expecting pressure, but it was sort of a fool me once, shame on you. He's just tucked in the corner immediately again. Anyway, we're not going up towards bar. As I said, it has massively fallen out of favor. It's just become too predictable. Yeah, I mean, you called it so in the beginning, and I think it speaks to... Especially most teams, they want to get active and be able to move around. Top 4 doesn't really give you that luxury with the window repel cut off, the skylight cut off of course. And reading bombsite is almost like a better yeah, version of top 4 bombsite because you'll play it in very similar fashion. You will hold the majority of the top 4 to defend the side below it essentially. It's why we see 3 4 members from Dark Zero playing inside a piano right now because they know that the attackers care about that part of the map. So therefore the defenders will care about it too to stop them from getting there too easily or too quickly. DZ, great start. A bit of momentum has been broken up here, and you know whether that plays in IP's favor or not, they definitely needed to have a little bit more cohesion. They struggled with some of their approaches yesterday. We cited it as the statistic that they are a bit slow to warm up. They are a bit slow to get into the momentum of the game here. And is that sort of perfect opportunity to prove them and all that statistical stuff wrong? They've suffered these first two rounds with plan A going entirely wrong. And it's not even by a surprise factor. If you are going for that Monty Bush onto the mm. site, you expect vertical hold. If you are sort of pushing up the staircases towards the site, which is reading, yeah. you expect the player on those staircases. They're not just going to leave white empty. Oh. Little mistakes. No, it certainly is little mistakes. And I think this opera lineup with like Bark, Ash, etc., Lion, you can get more stuff done with it essentially. So I do think that this, from an operator perspective at least, is already a better situation. I'm quite happy to see the NIP happy to change this on the third round. We start to see now, Nath, under a little bit of pressure, but I mean, he's under the skylight. There's not really a more pressured environment position to be in. He's actually just dropped. I think he sort of went, I'm not going to risk my life here. There's no point. The site isn't around this spot. They're holding onto the windows. He's hoping he can get a swing in or a cheap oh. take. On, gets Bolo. That's the first and a good bit of control here on the second story. They've cleared those players off. There is still... A rotate onto white that's being a little bit watched here by Pamba, who wants to try and risk and double dip, but you assume that they will peek over the wall itself rather than just throw themselves out. Oh, we almost mm. got an engagement white window, but Wizard is going to blind him. He knows they have his number. He's got a pullback. 
good look from MIP here. They're quick, they're surprising. Dark Seer catches them off guard, getting opening kills, and now they're actually slowing down a little bit, securing that white staircase flank, making sure Pemsu doesn't punish them back. And they got that five versus four. You can hear Box Hedda to keep tearing up that floor across like above the bomb side essentially. So in IP in about 20 seconds from now, they could very happily, very comfortably get to that bomb side and stop planting that diffuser. In DC, they don't have any true answer to this once they get in there. Moving utilities, getting it done. I mean, that 15 seconds is terrifying in a final minute. So it might end Giabe. Um, as he gets one onto Pamba before gets responded. There's a man who loves to use a heartbeat scanner, trying to find all the Valentine's romance he can on the floor above him, with Nafe still around pillars. Holding onto the long watch, hoping he can just get a strike on the back, because when there is 20 seconds left, if Wizard just hops this and gets caught out, suddenly this whole side might fall apart on this engagement. They're concerned about it. Oh. Cons does get caught. NGR and Nafe find one apiece, and there's that strike I talked about, because now there's 10 seconds left. All the advantage they had, all this play and positioning, he's just jiggle peeking oh. a pillar and wins it out. And I mean, Nafe has been given an opportunity here that not a lot of players get to play in a different region for a major team, the biggest tournament no less. Yep. He is making full use of this opportunity. That he is. He's had a phenomenal day one and so far a phenomenal start to day two. And I mean, he's gonna hate the fact that we had a rehost. He was like six and zero before that. He's seven and zero now, I believe. So he's doing great for himself. Or eight and zero now, I should say. And um, NIP when they're up against G2 yesterday, they often found themselves like a man advantage, early kill. You're thinking, okay, they should win this round. And what we just witnessed is the exact same scenario. They get opening kill. They get very control. It looked like they could just plant, and all of a sudden they lose. They lose one member to a gun kill, one member to a C4. They don't fully clear pillar. They don't draw up Nave in that corner, for example. And just like that, it falls apart. So whenever NIP they do well in a round, they get clutched against, or they just don't hold a tight enough grip on their opponent, and things they just slip away straight out of their hands. It's the old style of Siege, baby. It's coming back to haunt a lot of teams. And this is one of the things in a flag that got sort of waved by... And I regret to give him credit to this, Fabian. In our, yeah, I know. In our ride over towards the hotel was about how they struggle with new style of Siege. From what is a region that has been very, very good, not the best at mastering both disciplines, of the old style, the structure, the setup to take towards the new style of prod and split theory and see where you can find this opportunity to strike. They cannot quite get the momentum going. When something gets pulled away from them, mm. the rest of the round falls. Whether it happens at a minute and a half left or 30 seconds left, well, that's the sort of problem here. Canadian, out and about. Old man and his four friends having a good time in Siege. Yep. I mean, that's important. <laughs> having a good time is very important, right? You gotta like, have fun. He's the dad that drives the minivan of the team <laughs> to, like, get to the... Go to like, Disneyland or something like that, <laughs> yeah, you know? Let's go, kids! He's taking the kids to Disneyland. Canadian, he's gone for the hop-out. He's gone for the chase. <laughs> and they let him. Okay, Okay. Go. There is Wizard. Had the angle on the swing. The, I mean, it was Psycho. Just didn't want to sit around and have the old man brawl. I respect that effort, you know? Canadian getting very active. Oh, okay. the Pambasu, not again. Okay, he's gonna be fine. Unlike Canadian, it will be a 5v4. No more members from DC will fall on the roam. For now, we'll see how it starts to boil down. They obviously lost players that were jumping out, and I guess it's the perfect highlight of the old style of Siege. If you're paying enough attention, is set up for that. You can catch these players. These surprise strikes aren't so surprising if it's well rehearsed, if it's played before. There's not really a huge amount of jumps and runouts you can do. There is the one we saw Canadian do. Mm. There's almost half of the one that we saw Pamba do, where you don't always get somebody throwing themselves out of the pillar window. But if it happens, it happens, and you have the double door already open to get yourself back in. Yep. That's about it outside of the sort of whiskey window way. Here, though, there's enough time to get the vertical control. They've removed one player. But it's always worth remembering they've still got to do the structural work on a site where they could not get the kit anywhere comfortable. Yep. And then, I mean, again, we got to look at the key operators here. Osa from Khans with the diffuser in hand as well. It's going to be a clear indicator that Khans will drop down the hatch most likely for the backside and try and get into a plant position with the Talon Shield protecting his body. So another question is, what do they need? Well, they got to clear out Bolo and NGR essentially near the side here. At the very least, NGR. Because he's playing right below the hatch. C4 in hand pops it. Does a bit of damage, but does not confirm the kill onto Psycho or anybody else. Doing his best to dip, dive, and duck. But as the bullets start to ricochet across the side of the arms, it's only so tight you can keep your elbows oh. in here. Pino has the range, but Cons has the close firefight. And Yossa has that set. The 
They're just going for a little bit more safety. They maybe go a little bit too wide. They're trying to bait the utility and go for the plant on the back end. Bit of cover and a bit of a fight back is locked down. Pamper and Nay find one apiece in the trade, but a post plant oh. situation isn't found! There's suddenly 10 seconds. It's a two versus two and they're scrambling, but they're just being knocked aside. A huge retake that emphasizes that awareness we've talked about. DZ are able to find a round out of absolutely nothing, and an IP will be kicking themselves over that. Happened again. It looked like they shoulda, coulda, woulda won the round, but they didn't. And this is a new Dark Zero kind of era, if you will, for them. They have had a very rigid, very similar style team for a long time. And that is not a criticism because it did work. They won a major, they made it to other majors, and domestically always made top four. But with Nave and with Bolo, they are more fluid, you should say. They take more risks. And one thing they've been really excellent at so far, this, this Invitationals, is retaking. When they don't have any other options, they don't brute force through the side fighting vertical angles. They will run up a staircase, retake the floor above, and it works so often for them. I feel kind of bad for Nabi. They got Nomad, you know, Moose is playing that operator. They have flank drones, and they had five members alive. That shouldn't be a gap where Dark Zero found one. So it, this does come from NFP making some mistakes. Four in a row here. Poor DZ and NIP, obviously, it's a game that's par for the course. They haven't taken their tech timeout. It might be because the game has been so broken up by yep. tech timeouts that they're feeling, well, we haven't even gotten to our rhythm yet. So let's not break it up. Let's not stop ourselves from finding some momentum. Getting two on the attack on Cafe is the end of the world. It's their map as well. So you're sort of thinking, okay, well, maybe there's just. They love attack. They, they, yeah. they hate defense on this map, but they are flawlessing their attack. You never really know the team's decision here. Maybe they just think that they've got Dark Zero's sort of number on stopping their attacks here. It's a whole can of worms to open. And the first is wiggling their way up towards the top floor. They're going to see if they can try and get a more classical take rather than push up on the ground floor this time. Go to the top, remove the bodies up here, and then crack their way down. Yeah, that is the uh, the good old standard style here. The top down clears, and the thing is, with the summit being banned off, it's hard to defend the piano portion of the map itself. So this will give an IPA a slight advantage for clearing up the top one. It's why they're making such quick progress right now. But <laughs> as I say that, Jason, <laughs> he's there. Bolo shuts down Psycho immediately on the entry. Bolo inspired by Nath, I'm assuming. Top fragger. Uh, <laughs> What do you bring their way in? There is someone behind you, man. Turn around. Please, please turn around. <laughs> Didn't turn around. Muzi, able to get the head of Pam Bazoo, Canadian. They are going to get one more for the road. He's really leading, leading his sons around. I still love that. <laughs> Come on, Nave. Come, Come on, on Nave. Nave. Come on, help. Uh, the C4 doesn't quite pop it um, as the player has otherwise moved their way away. You're looking at what has been taken out in the approach here of... The attackers, there's no Iana, there's no Finca, which is in this lineup probably your one two prongs. But you do still have Muzi. He got one for this. He is a player that can somehow, regardless of what role he's on, find a couple of bodies in a thread. The hop round, the rotation, they have some vertical control, but we've seen a retake happen before. It's something that Dark Zero have in their pockets as Naif drifts lower and lower. He might be about to find a fight with a lion. How much awareness do they have? Not enough, but the blind! Perfectly placed. He's going in with the French revolver to finish him, and he dropped. Ooh la la. <laughs> Ooh la la, indeed. Nave on the white staircase cannot be removed from that position ever by an IP. In DC, they're comfortable. They're all sitting in corners. They got their cozy comfy spots. They know they got this lockdown. Dropping their way down towards the reading door. 45 seconds. They still have time. Four versus two is tough. But it's not unwinnable. It never really is in this game. We've seen clutches before. Oh. There was almost. The trade onto the second there, but Muzi is down, leaving just cons. He can try and get the pick back up. How confident is he that he's safe to do it? Either way, it's wasting a little bit more time. Ooh. Just a sliver of damage, Nave. Pulls his way back round. The blind and the pressure. They've got to try and close down one of these fights. They have to see if they can push this to an even advantage because one of them is about to be faced down. In fact, both are Nathan Canadian. Find the cement on the last two bodies. Five rounds in a row. Oh, man. You know, I did these... Uh Fantasy League with Jesse and some other people. Yeah. And I wanted Nave really badly. And right before it was my turn, someone took him. And I regret that so... I mean, he's playing out of his mind right now in the first two days. It's unreal. It is unreal. Uh, do you know what else is unreal? What? Jesse didn't invite me to play this Fantasy League. Oh. I, I didn't hold against anyone apart from Jesse, Jacek. Um, mm. I hate you, Jesse. I don't really. But 
Because do you did you ever play in Project Prisma? The I, old I, one. I don't believe so. No. Done by Candor. No. Who is the great community cards? I saw the cards. I in was Project. in my day a Project Prisma champion. It was like the first fantasy league. I had thinking nail on the points. Was breaking them in on that flank. Which I knew what <laughs> I was doing. And uh, Jesse was just scared. Let's be honest, Jesse. All your uh, fantasy nerd stuff. Whoever wins the your season, you're coming for next season. Oh, okay. Next season. Fantasy I think season. that's fair. Yeah. Different like fantasy champions with different like, leagues get together. And then they go together. against each other. They yeah. Need to, <laughs> they need to go against each other. What do MIP need to go against? Well, not being flawless at this point. There has been at least one. I think a 7-0 was against Falcons. Yep. Yesterday, obviously, they were playing with a lot of swapping players, which was then swapping again. Again, back to their core, Today. yeah. Um, but we have had a flawless, and then I do not want to be the bad end. Because as I said about this group before, these are two teams that are in, honestly, fighting for that second, third split. If there is the chance of them being lower bracket or upper bracket. It's probably going to be then in those positions filled out. This is going to be, I think, a very important game when it comes to the seeding of who's at the top and who's at the bottom of that mid pack. No, certainly, but also like speaking to like confidence and the mental side of things. Even if an MP didn't make it like through the group, so to speak, you're not gonna have the most confidence in yourself if you go like struggling here, getting flawless, etc. Unless they really start showing up in the coming days. Whereas Dark Zero with two new players, you know, you can have high expectations, low expectations. It doesn't really matter. The reality is, DC they look good and they look better than previously. So for them, they have this new system. It's clearly working. They'll be very happy with that. And uh, spoke to Canadian and uh, Bolin and said they've been scrimming a ton. And like what team hasn't, right? It's invitation. It's the biggest thing of the year. But they care. They know this matters. And they really believe in these two new players and the new system. And it's paying off so far. I mean, the new system is paying dividends. It was a quite the sort of thrown around where on their old system, it'll win you maps, not win your tournaments. Them changing towards this, them finding a drive. It's exciting to watch. It's exciting to see old teams and old players find new tricks because there's always the possibility of getting a little bit. There's so that great documentary that was done over the course of Atlanta, the quote of Canadian at the start of it when he's pumping iron in the gym, which I'm wondering whose idea that was, probably his. <laughs> I feel like I will only do this if we do it when I'm like lifting weights, uh, was that he is the best IGL and the most rewarded IGL of any yeah, in the game. That's true. And being able to still be this deep into it and change things up, there's a point there. Wiz, let's find Nath. English movie is out. Just NA versus Brazil Showdown. And the rest of the Americans carry the flag. Ooh, that would have been oh a C4 God. and a half. Almost two team kills there as well. But yeah, it's a rare side to see Nave going down, especially like relatively early in the round. But NIP, they've been here before where things look really great for them and then things still fall apart. So now they got to show us they can do it. They do have what it takes in these final 30 seconds. Like that's entirely it. There's 30 seconds left of the round. All they've been able to get is a little bit of a drop here onto Laundry. They're trying to turn it into a clean run towards the site itself. They've got the run, but they don't have the rotation of two versus five. 20 seconds. That's the Warrior. One versus four. There's the round, though. NIP stave off. At least the death blow for now. They're able to get one lifeline for the second half of this map, but we really got to see why they wanted to come here now. Yeah, and that's important to mention that you mentioned it, the one lifeline. If you go 6-0, it's like, okay, GG go next. You know, you make one mistake, it's over. Now they can do a little bit of fun stuff. If they want, they can risk one round. They still got one in the pocket, etc. But it is looking dire for them. Nikata shows a flawless, a perfect defensive side here. Meaning that DC, they can't clutch. And if you look at yesterday's game, Dark Zero, they had multiple moments against GK where they did indeed clutch up. Bolo had a 4k into a 3k, two rounds back to back. And while they did lose the map where he clutched on of Consulate, it was one of those moments where one player overtook the entire round. Kind of like Nave has in the first round and the third round of this matchup as well. So NIP, they gotta play a tight ship here and really play this like perfectly. What will DZ bring as well? Because as you said, if you have the one lifeline, you can do fun things. If you have four, hmm. well, you can do a lot of fun things here. And this is a really good map. This is again something I cited before. It's an enjoyable map. I still always think it's one with a lot left to learn and play. Hmm? It's always described as being a very intricate attacking map. It's one where you're fifty with the ranky stack. You gotta make sure everyone's playing a game. You, yeah. You can't just clubhouse your way through it. No, no sleepers. No sleepers. You gotta have a full-fledged stack 
And it, it's the same because it, it keeps that development going in terms of the attack. Here, you look at this lineup on the left, Ying, the blitz in the bucket of Canadian, which, all right. Cool. Yeah, I want to see this. Yeah, there, uh, there's fun stuff and there's trolling, and Canadian Blitz is like low key a troll situation. But I'm happy to see him yeah. succeed here. <laughs> I mean, give me a Canadian Blitz play. Give me, give me a scream up the stairs as an entry roll. <laughs> ah, What's really gonna up. happen, I think, is the hop through on the window, the turtle shell on the back, and the attempt on the plant just on the inside. They have the Fenrir, which means that the crossover is mm. going to be a little bit awkward from Wizard, but that won't stop you planting. This could work. Wizard's like entirely alone in the first four, basically. If, if Blitz sends it, if Projects goes for it, this could actually work. There it is. There's the play. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Bamba goes down as well. Wizard does get blinded. They're just trying to get the finish onto the end of him. I mean, if, That's my bad. if they'd have waited a split second later... They might have had a better chance, but at the same time, the problem was that was finally getting the rest of the kill. He already had the angle lined up. He was watching for the window. NJR does find Musi and does at least get a body out of it. But we talked about it in the very first round of this map. When you lose the shield, you lose plan A. Yep. Same thing here, even if it was a silly plan. Yeah, and Ying falls as the second member as well. And I gotta say, the downside of playing Lion or Ying is that when you use that Lion scan or the Candela goes out, it gives your enemy like a slight like forewarning that something's about to go down. You yep. don't know what it is, but you're gonna be on your toes. Wizard started pre firing that window because of the Candela and the Lion scan. And unfortunately for DC, Nadian got hit by the very first bullet straight in the dome. Bolo. Let's see what you can do as you will almost get into the fight. You're just on the swing on the clock. You know, pulled back into reading is going to sit and wait. They have the support structure of two other players that might not know that they're entirely on drone, but when you have a man disadvantage, well, you've got to leave that to the dead and see if you can try and make more exchanges. Talking of, Psycho's gone for a deep exchange all the way underneath the rotation happening on Brown just to his right hand side. Which he might not know about Nafe's new position, but Nafe has no idea about Psycho too. So suddenly, there's this big threat that can come up from behind. Nafe, though. It's gone by surprise. Gets an engagement out of him. Pons is able to win it. Drop on the Ooh. top. There it is now the one versus four. And JR has at least the first engagement. The second is a bit of a shake. He's not entirely sure where he's being shot from because it's multiple places. And there's that deep rotate from Psycho coming out. But that was exactly one of those rounds where you try something that might not work because you can afford to lose the round if it doesn't. So if there ever was a time to do it, that would be the round. And also, let's say it had worked. You're catching NIP off guard tremendously, and they're going to have to be worried about a potential rush in the future as well. So now DC, knowing Troy at least, they will not go for that kind of play probably ever again in this particular matchup because they've done it. It didn't work. They are ready for it. They expect it, etc. You see it right here. Kind of scammed there, I got to say, for Troy. You know, you, you would think the shield would cover the head, but not always. That's the Blitz life. It's Blitz life, baby. Yeah, and it's a tough one. I mean, there is nothing that is more sticky at times than the interaction between yeah, jumping over things in yeah. this game and shields especially of just what is protected and just what isn't it was the right crosshair placement from wizard as yeah. he said he was the only one on the site itself but he had practiced exactly the one window where if they get this it's done or other doors if they put the pressure onto fireplace side you'll have a little bit more rotate from the other swing. Mm -hmm. you'll have the dining window will give you a little bit more support from you know, uh, reading or white stairs, depending on the hold. There is the danger. Here, again, you get in the top heavy holds. We go over towards the other mid floor site. Not quite going to the top of the bottom as of yet. So go. getting these deep angles that you can sort of play and rotate around on. The castles, are, you know, it's a curious sort of setup here because they've got heavy in the core of what is just the vertical control. Yeah, and a bit surprising that they opt for this like castle that Rooney kind of very rotative system. You'd think that with mirror open, you just like slap a mirror window on a wall, etc. You hold the deep lines of sight, but there has been a change in case you guys weren't aware to Ashes breaching charges in Kali's Lance, where they will now shatter the windows off the mirror. And perhaps that change has been enough for some teams to stop bringing the mirror any longer because it's so quote unquote easy to counterplay. I mean, because otherwise, I don't see why you wouldn't play it. Yeah, it's such a nerf as well. It's obviously something that once upon a time it could happen accidentally, and everyone mm. was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, what, what's this going on is, here? This is horrible, <laughs> broken. And now Ubisoft saw that and went, actually, That's we found neat. a way to. This is the sort of pinnacle, if you've not been watching Siege for the whole sort of run of it, mm. when Mirror was introduced, 
it changed the game. Absolutely. It, it, and yeah, operators get introduced, they can change what you can do. There's some very strong defenders at this point, but nobody has really had the same effect as a site architect like her because it went from we can see things in front of us to we can see things across the whole floor now yeah. with a setup. We can open these walls and extend. Cons extends through NGR, removes the air jack off the board first. Oh, a quick pick back up by Pamba to make sure they have some hold down. But with the Lion as well, it's a big appreciation for the fear of the roam. Yeah, I mean, the one good thing here is that that's the only C4 on the board for the defense. So now, vertically speaking, you don't have to worry about so many things. But the bomb side is downstairs. How crucial would that C4 be? It's hard to tell. NFT playing. <laughs> okay, that's unfortunate. It's hard to hit drones, It's hard okay? to hit drones. Much harder than players. The boogie drones of Bolo are opening up the castles on the second story above, and now he's just holding on to the long range. What they're trying to do here is clear a pocket of space. The kit has made its way through the train room towards just the tuck onto dining, but if they have that verticality, well, they'll just kill you. So what do you do? You can either try and take it entirely, kill everyone that's up there, or just get yourself a little window of space. Get yourself a corner that you can tuck for and make things uncomfortable for them. Draw the attention elsewhere, with Pamba holding tucked onto the slightly open pillar's wall. If he swings this and gets an engagement, there might be a call they're going for right here. He's able to get that. The E1D comes out, blow up on the back stairs, Ooh. gone for a heavy rotate. Do they know? They don't know. There goes Psycho as Bolo gets it, but there's 15 seconds. We've seen an IP losing these positions before Canadian goes deep all the way around, but with the rotate on the back from Muzi, does he know just how close the fight is? The first is with Bolo, and he's able to win it out, but in a post plant situation, three versus two. Now, they have to see if they can try and go for the retake. They drop down, going for the direct line towards the corridor, get the control of 90. There goes both of them, though, DZ, with a very solid structure on that approach, get themselves to map point. It's a great adaptation, right? You, you see Pamusu get the kill on towards the library plane. You think, okay, they're going to go through the breach plan library, but no, that's purely a distraction. So Pamba goes to that kill. Meanwhile, two members inside a train with Diffuser, they will distract the person on the white staircase, the uh, the um, the Aruni, rather, while Bolo flanks off from the basement. That was like a four-step plan that DC they had full control over, and I have to believe, I want to believe, when you have someone like Nave and Canadian together who can both call excellently, that's when you can build up so many different pieces at the same time. Oh, I love it. I love seeing this from DZ. Because as I said, there is a lot about this game that you enjoy, but the the reason this game is different from every other game is its ability to play like Jeff. Its yeah. ability to have tactics change from a team, from a whole mesa, as the development of new operators, as the development of new gadgets, it just changes to existing gadgets, but also people having good ideas. Because yeah. it's all soft at the end of the day. It's all adaptable and changeable, and it's all opportunities. You have one fight on this map against another team, it can be an entirely different game. And to see teams still this late on in their run, still be, what, however many SIs and tournaments yeah. Troy has played at, bringing new levels to his own game, I mean, this is the man that never stops wanting to improve. No, that it really it, 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 it is that rather. And the reason why he claims that he is, or says that he is the best IPL ever is because he literally is. He's played for three different, like, core orcs slash rosters, winning with all those different people. And now on DC alone, gone through so many iterations of different players, making things work, qualifying for majors, etc. And this man is, you know, he's no longer 18, right? He's up there. He's played for a very long time. <laughs> he's, uh, he's no longer 28. He's <laughs> no longer 38. No, he's, whoop, right? <laughs> But it's like, how do you have the motivation? That's just, you want to improve. You want to learn. You are hungry for self-improvement. That's got to be the angle here for Troy. NIP now still have everything ahead of them. Obviously, also still attack timeout, as far as I'm aware. I'm, yeah. I don't remember back, but I have everything marked as tech. So unless it sort of happened alongside the same side, they're going to see if they can just try and play this one out and get to the end of it. Wizard wants to creep on past the white window and the corridor, but nobody is really putting the pressure on it as of yet. Instead, it's the focus on what needs to be done first. The spinning blue knight <laughs> light <laughs> in Canadian's eyes. That's just, that just comes with age. I like that. Uh, as they're going to just get the quick pop on the wall, which gives them the rotate. A pretty standard approach here. The mute jammer is there. More to delay than destroy. Psycho, however, mm. is destroyed. NJR gets the Solus, and, well, when a Solus is gone from under the... Underneath the air jab, it was just a fight down from the bottom of garage. 
and ran out, it seems like. Bit risky, but here we go. Pambus with party time, baby. He's inside the bottom side. Yeah, the execute's coming right through. Pamba screams all the way across. Moosey's holding on to 90, and they're able to hold on quite well there. Pamba keeps rocking and rolling, gets the first fight onto Lumba, sees the second suddenly, and luckily he's got an LMG. As long as that player was alive, he was giving calls. They're swinging either side, though. Oh. He's stuck in the middle of three players. The swing comes around, and an execution happens either side. And I be great response built on the back of those first two bodies. However, as you said, DZ, they have rounds to play with. They went yeah. for a quick strike. Twice of the three hasn't worked either time. The structure might be returning. I was going to say this exact same kind of take as the very first round where it wasn't necessarily a strategically sound plan. It's very high risk, high <laughs> kind of reward. If it works, it works, right? It works, it works. And if it doesn't, then you got rounds to play with. So it's not the end of the world in that scenario, but... Yeah, you're keeping NIP on their toes, essentially. Well, the trades have to stop here. NIP have to do what they haven't been able to do this whole map, which is win two rounds in a row. Now, obviously, yesterday, we came off the back of the last few maps dropped against G2. Here, I mean, they're still probably confident they'll get out of groups, but it's way beyond that. Because you know that, you know, worst case scenario, if a team B2, you might have to beat them again. Yeah. It's a long, 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 long road to the top. It's a long, long, long road that T2 walked last time because, well, most of it was a lower bracket well, yeah, run. Pretty much all of it, yeah. It's not over till it's over, but you want to try and get yourself in the sort of mix. You want to make statements in your game of being like, all right, you got us this time. Mm. We're going to get revenge. Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, NIP, you know, they cannot, you can always, you know, pull the uh, the Giga Brain G2 strat. We're saving strats, right? Saving strats. We're saving strats. strats. Saved. And then it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, like, at some point, like, late in the tournament, you just, like, flip a switch and you are crazy. Most teams are not going to do that, no. right? It's not realistic. And half the time G2 pretends that they're saving strats. They aren't either. I can speak from experience. We didn't always save strats. <laughs> but people it was believe an excuse. it. Yeah. It was just a word. Like, sometimes we Spoiler did. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, guys. We weren't that good. Sometimes we did, in fact, just suck. You know? It happens. <laughs> Everybody has bad days. I like that as the, like, the dynasty. Sometimes we suck. <laughs> it's like a slogan underneath it. Yeah. Shields are about to knock into each other. We've got Canadian oh bringing boy. the Monty this time around. The second time we've had a Monty go and attack Kitchen. This time from the opposite end. Though it might have just been to give follow this angle. However, Reloading. with the clash on the board, not the most frequently played operator, it sort of limits... Obviously, the amount of guns you can be swinging at the right time. But on a site like this, where it's very short as a distance between outside to inside the building, mm. something to buffer is great. A mobile buffer that can really give you that intel without the danger of instantly being destroyed is huge. Canadian, he goes all the way up towards the water. And he's going to get blinded, but it doesn't really matter. They're hoping that somebody else can come behind them. Just calling the position. Drops mm. the shield, baits the fight. Trying to hope that the angle can come through. There's the attempt on the knife. And they're just spraying oh, through boy. the soft suffering, but the clash is keeping the player at bay. Nobody can come in to support them, just holding them in the corner. Canadian's got the kit. If he goes uh -oh. down, and this kid is just sat there while well, he's blind and power, oh. finally finds moves. He swings around the C4, comes out, oh, and somehow pulls the rabbit out of the hat and then drops two people in the same breath. That really should have been the kill there onto the warden. The hesitation on the pop of the C4 baited the player in towards the moment and NJR just sat watching and waiting from the range here. How long can Wizard survive? Because already it's probably about a minute longer than it should have been. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, where's the backup here? Where's the help for Troy Kinnitin? He's sitting there or standing where they're looking at his opponent saying, guys, kill this player. Like, he's just standing <laughs> there and NJR is still holding that same angle. Nave rotating over. Bolo died behind Troy just previously. This entire round got a one just by one player and that was Wizard. The smoke goes on the clash. Wait NJR finally gets Wizard, but I mean, he has played a blinder here whilst not being blind with the glasses. They still have a clash to get through. Even though they've got to get the kit down, they have one of the most troublesome operators ahead of them and not really the utility to get rid of it. So at this point, it's just going to have to be a bait on the swing, a double push, or just see if you can strong arm yourself towards the opposite end. And that's what they've gone for. And JR hops in towards the bakery. Nafe tries to go into the larger bakery via prep, but in the first fight, is his to take. The second is suddenly oh. there as well. No! Oh! Can't quite get it. He's out of time. But oh my word, that was close. <laughs> Imagine he hits that, right? What if a normal ending that would have been for him and Dark Zero? And NIP, you know, you're sitting there. Guys, we got this. Two seconds to just stay alive. Bang, bang. Oh, please do not <laughs> die. Please.
And Clash had the gun out as well. Could have had the shield, but no. I mean, it was... It's chaos. Millimeters. Millimeters was the difference there on Nath pulling off what would have been one of the plays of the tournament on, on day two. Yeah, it certainly would have been up there. And now things get a bit... Uh, a little bit dire for Dark Seer. They call their technical timeout. They get some time to talk to their team, as will NIP. And uh, when I said earlier that Troy on, on Blitz is like a bit of a troll pick, Troy is not necessarily a shield player. And it might sound odd to say, but it requires a certain mindset or play style or way to perform to play a Monty or Blitz with high success. It's why very few players tend to play those operators in professional play. And the Blitz didn't work out. Not Troy's fault in that scenario in the first attacking round. But now with the Monty. He just kind of stands there, right? He could go for the melee, try and go more for the closer hip fire, etc. But he doesn't necessarily understand the exact min-maxing of the Monty versus Warden due to sheer lack of experience because he doesn't find himself in Monty all that often. I mean, still, just that sort of tragedy that happened there. Here, Ooh. how close? How close? It's close. Oh. He's like <laughs> right in the like, yeah, chest area, I think, shoulder area. If he have like held the trigger on the pre-fire yeah, there, yeah. It, he that might have been it. Kill. And, uh, you know, it, it's so simple for us to always say this, but that is how close the distance was. If there was a, if the other sort of remaining player, ever it was at that point, I, remember, I think it was NJR maybe, was with him yeah, as yeah. well. That could have been the round, that could have been the hold up, but when you have to sort of go, we ball. <laughs> yeah. They balled, and they almost came out with it. The timeout has been called, NIP, they've been able to pull it back from a 6 a 6 Four, but there's still only one round separating it from one map away from them. It does make us a little bit more interested in how the second and potentially third map will go if NIP really does start to get into their the game. Yeah, because we always say that NIP, they're a slow team. They need to get into the, the, the tournament, into the server, into the matchup, etc. They've now had their time and the one player that's kind of we haven't spoken much of besides the beginning was Bolo. He's had a very quiet game, two and seven. To be fair on attack, playing that flex kind of similar support role, the Thatcher, the Ace, etc. Usually dying, trying to help somebody else, or dying to enable his team elsewhere on map. So that is just those like like non-sexy roles, if you will. Yeah. And you might think, well, oh, Sophia, Ashmi, and Intri, bang, bang, pew, pew. Not necessarily in Dark Zero, not on Cafe, not right now. He's playing those other roles that his team needs him to play. I think that's the thing about this team as well. When you've got people like Pamba, when you've got people like NJR as well, yeah. who can have these tournament-defining games. You think about the major that they won yeah. in Charlotte before, they were terrifying to up against in entry. A different matter when you've got LMG swinging every single corner, but still, Bolo is a heavily capable fragger. We know this, but so are other players. So you sort of look at other options. You look at ways to manipulate the space. Talking of, the space is being blinded and pushed. The Fenrir does stop an immediate swing behind, but you can't see anything. Both teams hmm. are stuck a bit blinded here, and they can't make a motion beyond just getting the drop onto the hatch itself. It gives them a route and a vision down towards the site, but with all the noise that was made, you assume a player or a presence could be there. So NIP isn't just going to ignore that top red now. I think it's a bit awkward for Darks here because Pemba's in the building but stuck in that red staircase. Troy joins him, drops as well, but they're not making a whole lot of progress here given the fact that there's only a minute and 15 seconds left on the clock. They need to, you know, figure out what do they want. Okay, next step, maybe the hat. Are you up top war? Maybe, maybe not. But either way, you need to find a pathway right now because it looks like they're kind of stuck inside of just library, cigar, and red staircase. The boogie drones getting the big deep look towards the top of the B site itself. They're making things awkward in the position that was played and won by Wizard before. They've otherwise fully sort of stacked and sent it towards the back end of the dining room, which, uh, you know, it's not entirely hands off the site, but look at the clarity that they've got. Whiskey's been opened, so they can force that player away from the top of the mining room. They're forcing the player away from the side of piano as well, so they can get inside train and get the lock down. The only places that NIP can really watch from this point are down towards the back of reading, down oh. towards the corridor. Hammer gets a knife and gets the swing right round as Canadian drops onto the side itself. Has the kit. He's gonna see if he can try and make it stick with Pamba, getting all the coverage that they can get inside the corridor itself. Swings for the final player, sees the lineup of two and is a little bit stuck for choice, but finds four for the round. Dark Zero find this first map. It's theirs to take home. And they might set themselves up here for the 2-0 of their decisions. While the worst on rounds are a bit messy for DC, they were also taking those risks, willingly saying we can afford to lose those rounds. But when they had to play a solid round of Siege, 
they did that. All five members working together once again with an explosive bomb set execute with Troy with Diffuser being the initial entry on towards the side. It's so great to see again to have a roster of this sort of history of this sort of echelon keep themselves going and keep themselves changing things up. And the questions were how is Nave going to change things? That's quite evident Pretty how good. well he's performed. <laughs> Um, and I guess we'll see how we get to it on the next, but obviously with Dark Zero in this position, there's so much pressure on NIP now. Yeah, there is. And I mean, NIP right now, you know, you might not know them as like the best team in the world, but go <laughs> back to like 2019 to like 2021, they were everywhere. They were at SI Grand Finals, they won an SI the following year, and then yeah, they've kind of fallen off the radar a little bit, but overall, they're trying to make a return back to that quote-unquote top dog spot. And where we are, a quick break, but we're back. Got the lead, two rounds. If they can extend it to three match points, they're going to be in such a strong position. What are your thoughts on this jump out? I mean, typically, again, as I said, you go for that kind of jump out. You're never really, at least statistically, making it back in. I don't think it matters. I think dislodging that rappel is really important because you know, obviously, like I mentioned, right? If you're on the defense, if you're wolves, you can't contest that rappel. You, there's no way of you getting into lobby with the four other attackers there. So the jump out there to dislodge it, not not too bad. It's the other defenders, especially the two that got locked at front desk, for me, yep. that made or, or ultimately broke the round on the walls. Yeah, one goes out, so Pal 2 locked out front desk, then you lose the battle top square. Suddenly, you've just lost a lot of uh, map control, if you will. Bliss doing a really good job so far. 5-3, but don't get out the walls. Their map pit on the defense, a side that they've been very strong at so far. But one thing we didn't quite touch on is you go back to the SSG game yesterday, Wolves actually banned out bank, and then they go and pick it against Team Bliss. And I was actually speaking to Fresh over in the green room before this game and trying to figure out well, where is Bank really in their map pool? And it's it's around like that kind of third to fifth kind of preference map. And clearly right now, I, I think kind of highlighting, it's not really perfected for them. Still time though to figure things out, especially on the defense and a team like Team Ballista don't quite have that SI experience to be able to maybe close this one out cleanly. There will be mistakes from them. It's up to the Bulls to capitalize when they do come through. And Bliss, again, showing that they have different, uh, a, a, you know, abilities to try and unlock rounds here on the attack. Instead of going super fast pace this time, instead of slowing things down in the face of the castle, they're going to try and contest that. They have the utility as well to deal with it. Sage with the Capital Bolts as well, so I'm intrigued to see where those have been utilized. Maybe trying to flush out a position like Janitor, for instance. I'm not too sure. Fisho on the Grim as well, which has seen a decent amount of play thus far at SI24. Again, good at dislodging positions, but Bliss need to be ready and active to unlock those positions by getting other players in a in a place where they can find kills. And at the moment, that hasn't really been the case. Brendo has been able to just lurk in towards top square, but there hasn't been a stack of pressure on this defense. Wolves doing a good job. Three nitro cells available for the Wolves. They haven't lost anyone yet. I think Mirror Window is going to be a big factor as well, and obviously trying to keep this kind of top floor control, but. At some point, probably going to look to give this up. And in fact, they have. Originally, Janitor was being played, and then they make the rotate back downstairs. Minute and a half, they felt as if enough time had already been wasted. Obviously, don't get any kills for it. And a rather extensive setup, obviously, from the Wolves in terms of what they've committed utility-wise. That's a nice nitrous ult, though, from Mowgli. He gets his 12th kill of the game. And finally, for the Wolves, getting these early contact fights to go their way, something we haven't seen a whole lot of on Bank. They get up a two-player advantage with 60 seconds left in the round. And, we'll, and, and honestly, for Bliss, they haven't even looked close to getting any kind of semblance of fight control. Where they're like clear out archives, but they haven't really got any kind of bot square control, not looking to open up main wall. 50 seconds left, it's probably like a drop territory. Oda though, as a, is able to find one onto Mowgli. Bit of beepers control, one in elevator, can't win that battle. Nicely done from P4. For the SMG 11, Sage to drop, but he gets shot out immediately. Can't stand up and win that battle. Wedibles can't get the trade. Bibo and Shinka to finish off, and the Wolves get a fourth and much needed round. Great work there from the defense. There haven't been a lot of rounds from either side defensively where they've gone for an extension up above the objective and they've then made it out scot-free whilst also wasting a lot of time. So that was good work from the defensively. And I think highlighting that sometimes Bliss can have issues where time becomes a factor and if they don't find any picks on the roam, that can come back to bite them in the late round. So Wolves fighting hard, looking to push this game to its limits. First pick there with the Nitro was clean. And 
from there able to just steam. Yeah, love the uh, setup as well. You know, the kind of pressure window, mirror inside Janitor looking in towards CEO Executive, and then the drop back down in towards Staff and open area, just wasting time. It was like a 90 seconds left in the round before Bliss were able to really even turn their attention over towards site itself and Staff and open area. By that point, Wolves already well set up, able to contest a lot of those key positions. Obviously a bit of frustration there for Fisher Guy being shown. Five forward lead, those still four Bliss. And while they've been good, it's all about getting the job done. We've, we've had enough of APAC being close, but not close remaining. enough. Need to try and get a lot of these APAC teams this tournament to get over the line, get Five some actual remaining. proper results. No more of this honorable loss <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> Time to get some wins. And while Bliss have obviously been able to do that against the Wolves back in Atlanta, if they can start with a win here and a best of three at SI, boy, the confidence boost that that could be for them. Wolves, I mean, they've already won a game. They've already won a series. 2-1 over the SSG yesterday. So probably not as dependent on this, but this group could be thrown into disarray already. If Bliss find a way, and hypothetical, very early on here, SSG will have already won, they beat FaZe. Wolves have already won, then Bliss would have already won. Suddenly FaZe would be like yeah. fourth in the group. And we were sort of pitching FaZe. Never mind, they beat D+, yeah. yeah. Not looking good for D+. No. Good for Bliss though, if they have win this series. Long way to go though, into the 10th round, Wolves. I think are gonna be proving to be quite difficult to dislodge on the defense. I think, again, it's going to come down to late round basement here. And we've seen both from Wolves and Bliss some real struggles in being able to find win conditions and actually exploit correct positions, even with a man advantage. So we'll see how they go this time. Some util on the roam here in terms of reinforcements from the defense, but the Wolves not playing it directly at the moment, I don't believe. All five players in basement. P4 close by on the stairs, so he can look to chip away at drone economy. But outside of that, Bliss will have about a minute and a half to just confirm where these defenders are. Reload! Look to formulate an attack. Before gets thrown down over towards bot main, 90 seconds left in the round. Five men stacked down below now for the Wolves. This is proving to be a little dis difficult for Team Bliss. Able to deal with at least uh, one of those Vulcan canisters in terms of time delay, very important. Obviously the smoke is up as well from Shinka. You've got the Yokai, so again, that stall out will be prevalent and will be something that Bliss have to be mindful of. That time is not going to be on their side here and need to get moving and shaking sooner rather than later. And it's looking like an elevator bot main stairs focus. Maybe also lobby hatch as well. I don't think they're going to opt to maybe go for a full server side stack. Oda trying to just see if he can find an angle here to get an opening pick. Under 60 seconds. Guys, time is dwindling. Shinka still with three smoke canisters. So a default plant here through server is going to be very challenging Stopping as the first of those are dispersed. It's no time here. It's going to come into a hatch drop for Bliss, perhaps a back push through gold as well at the same time. We'll see if they're able to pull this off for 30 Flash seconds out. now on the clock. Flash out, no, sorry, smoke out from stage. Fisher got to go once in again. I think he might have gone a bit deeper here or otherwise that smoke missed. Never mind. in the end, Shinka does die. Fisher gets off the plant. 20 seconds, trades out three versus four in favor of the Wolves though. Oda, bot main, you need to push. 15 seconds left. You're going to be the one now to make a bit of contact here. Try and find the next kill or two, otherwise the rest are going to go down. Dead, yeah, fisher has gone, that's your planter. Down on the floor, Brendo in a one versus four. Wolves are going to make this 5-5. A very, very strict defense on basement. They look strong, and they're making that comeback here look very possible. They didn't go down too significantly, but now 5-5 starting to really take the ascendancy here on bank. Goyo, Smoke, Echo going for a default plant. Bliss, I think we're a little bit optimistic in that round. Wolves made very few mistakes. Mowgli as well, big 2K in that chaos. You flip that, maybe Bliss can then overload the objective and make things a little bit more challenging, but not meant to be. And Basement continues to be a defensive haven. Yeah, that was big there from Mowgli. Massive moment again. He's been the MVP so far in this match. Ten seconds left. If you said what you said in terms of that flip, Mowgli doesn't get Whoa. that double kill. Maybe you get hatch control for, for Bliss. They can overload side a little bit easier. Nice. Doesn't happen. Whoa. Mowgli stands his ground. Nice. And Wolves make it 5-5. Five, five. A very tense affair for a team matchup that has a lot of history when it comes to Bliss versus Wolves at these international tournaments. It feels like it always goes the distance between these two teams. Shall they to come after this, a map that Bliss have beaten the Wolves on previously. Bank was the unknown clubhouse, a map where maybe I think Bliss won't be feeling too confident. Big round here. Who can get map point to begin? Is this going to be an early jump out from Vivu? That would be insane. 
And the send's being brought here from Sage on. Yeah. Tell you what, we might well end up seeing every operator played at this event. We're probably actually getting quite close to that at the moment. I'm not too sure. Attackers have located oh, this a bomb. could be very intriguing. I think the big storyline, though, is we are not going to see basement again here for Wolves in regulation. That's the big storyline. So they're going to have to step up on these tertiary sites, with, which have proved to be difficult. Mogulu roaming around on the vigil. 15 and 8 for him. Again, another standout performance after a good first day here at SI. A little bit more quiet, though, from Deadshot. You think back to yesterday, he was absolutely farming. Only two kills here in 11 rounds, or 10 and a half rounds. Well, historically, this is where APAC crumbles. They always get a sniff. They always feel like they're, they're in with a chance. It gives the fans hope, and then that hope gets crushed time and time again. Hello, 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 and welcome back here towards... Whoa, these are highlights. This happened just before, and it was a cafe. There's probably something NIP. Well, at the beginning, don't want to remember it, any of it. Clean swing in here from DZ on NIP's map pick. They're able to just hold pockets, completely tear them apart on the defense. NIP's attacks could not find a foot in. No, they couldn't. Meanwhile, DC, they start off very, very strong, having so many almost flawless rounds where NIP, they looked like, yeah, they might have a solution for this. And no, Dark Seal, they had the answer time and time again. Only one player didn't really show up right now for DC. That was Polo, but he did that supportive work regardless. So even the player didn't find a scoreboard, still had impact in the game for DC. They did on the second half. NIP start to find a little bit more rhythm in the motions. A couple of big clutches, a couple of big rounds, but the difference that had been put together by uh, DZ in the first half was just a little bit too much for surmount. We found it as the sort of end of it, a 7 to 4, but it could have gone a little bit closer. Dark Zero had to take their time out, had to sort of go, okay, we're letting this get away from us. <laughs> Won the round after the timeout. You do wonder just how far things could have gone if they decided to try and not keep pushing against the grain. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you know Dark Zero's story the last couple of years, they love to go into overtime. And the longer they can go without it, I think the better it's going to go for them, especially because long torment for Serbia energy and also maybe avoid some heart attacks for your long term fans. Because if you've been a Dark Zero fan since the beginning, it's been a wild ride. Yeah, it, I mean, it's ups, it's downs, and here they are, still finding a little bit more rhythm to it. Naif, again, what a performance. That's been able incredible. To do. I guess that's the thing, is you didn't notice it towards the end because he was, what, 5-0, and 6-0 and after yeah. the first re-host that we lost out on towards the end of it. As a player who is a support player, being able to put these numbers up so consistently, I mean, you're looking at Pamba, NGR, and Bolo, who are probably looking at each other like, we need to do that. Like, yeah, we gotta step up we here. We gotta step up here. We're being shown up. Canadian looks miserable in that photo. <laughs> he looks like he went six and six. You know, he's like, he looks man. like a man. He's gone six and six, and he's trying to be like, all right, you know, yeah. let's just let's just keep going. And where we're going next is Clubhouse. Yeah, another kind of like strat-oriented map. So if you do well on Cafe, I feel like you would do well on Clubhouse as well. And you know, for an IP, they played it in the first game against G2. Two seven loss, not the greatest situation. And Dark Zero can watch that vault and say, "This was a weakness. We're gonna abuse that as well." And say, "Okay, we can now expect something from an IP." Whereas they have no video evidence recently of DC on this map. Yeah, it's that sort of tricky situation where, hey, who was the other team that NIP went into on Clubhouse and they didn't have any recent vault? Oh, it was G2. <laughs> exactly the same thing. Exactly the same map. G2 hadn't played it at either of yep. the majors this year, they'd sort of mm. kept it in the back pocket and they pull out a 7-2 win. You know, there's a risk sometimes of double dipping a map, even if you're good at it. Certainly. If it's the same situation and the same setup, you sort of wonder like, an, oh no, is it happening again? Yeah, if you lose this back-to-back, -back, I think for NIP, I think Klopp is out of the equation now for at least a few yep. days. It's like, no, we tried this twice, we're not going back a third time. Everybody does have a club. I think that's, yeah, yeah. that's sort of well known. 82. Oh, 82. <laughs> It's getting worse. It was 71 last man. Uh, 82 now. It's the, it's the NA fans waking up. It might be that. They've, the had, their, they've had their coffee. They're happy to get in. What do you think about these the DC jerseys? I, I'm okay with them. I don't, okay. I don't love That's them. That's like the most neutral. No, it was like, yeah, honestly, right the, the first thought that comes to mind is like, I didn't really notice that they're different, but but think about it, I, I did. You know, I saw uh, the boys this morning, but no, I'm like, I'm like indifferent. Cool. I yeah, like they're okay. shoulder pads. Very... 
for glam. You know what they're missing? They're missing like a star for like winning a side. You know, that's what True. they're missing, and that's what they're working towards. Right? I think. Yeah, I mean, if you've got the stars and the jerseys, you can point to them. Canadian has. He should have one. Yeah, because G two they have, they have two stars now in the jersey. I think w for the, for the org yeah, and W seven M has the stars in the jersey. I, th I can't remember if there was a picture that was put on the Flickr. Yeah, or that yeah. was posted of both. Because the thing that happened yesterday with between M eighteen and W seven M, there's like a little fun I've conflict. Heard about he it. goes, "You see these two stars?" and he points towards them. I was like, "Yeah, okay, double major. I'm sorry." Yeah, but hey, those aren't SI stars. You haven't got no hammers on that jersey. <laughs> All right, pretty similar bands to what we had just before, but to be honest, those two defender bands, I mean, defenders, they're pretty hot right now. There are about five or six super powerful defenders where you're sort of just in a very sticky situation of what do we get rid of? Mm. Benrear, I would say, was a little bit problematic for DZ's approaches yeah. in the previous half, but they're still thinking, nah, there, the there are worse ways to have them have control this can. map. Let's get rid of his yeah, where when, on the setup in a P, they're respecting the Ying play from Pambus on that previous map of Cafe because they've banned Ying this time. And Ying on Clubhouse, I wouldn't say the most played operator, just for the basin bomb side perhaps, but for the other three bomb sites, not the highest pick rate necessarily. So a lot of respect you're being paid from an IP towards that particular operator. Whereas DC, they do this thing where they have a system, they don't want to face Asami, they don't want to face Tokubi as often as they can avoid them, they'll just keep banning those out. And if their opponent bans it for them, they get a free ban of their choosing. So, the orcs don't change it. All right, to the top we go. Dark Zero, they're going to start themselves on an attack here. Let's see if they can try and get the drive through against NIP. Obviously, they opted for this. this Dark Zero's map pick. They're going to see if yep. they can try and put some damage in. To be fair, and this is a... Fun little tieback is a nafe led team back in the days of uh, m m used to want to drive the attacks because they were one of the few teams that could attack clubhouse they felt confident doing it and when you are in that position that was a different meta back then mm. was it makes people terrified of what can otherwise be done because they're like oh this is their weaker half oh no we're losing more rounds than exactly. we should it's such a confidence thing that they're bringing in the breach on the opposite end if you're Familiar with how a hold like this is broken apart, although the bomb site is all the way at the bottom, the reinforcements done on the top floor means we've really got to spend time clearing it. And that starts with just breaching onto the cards and getting the rotation down towards uh, the top CC. I'll also say that looking at like how to attack pretty much every map in Siege, I think Clubhouse is the most like one, two, three ABC style where if you have a quote unquote perfect attack every single round, you are expected to win more attacking rounds than not even if it is a quote-unquote defender-sided map, because you have solutions for every single problem on Clubhouse, at least more often than not, you do have those solutions. So if you have good IGLs, vocal players, good problem-solving skills, you will always find a gap or a weakness, or at the very least a way in on every single attack around. DC with this current system with two IGLs of Nathan and Canadian, this could be a favorable spot for them, which is why it's their map. I could see it. Steadily. They've been able to get some control over the whole of the map at this point. They're feeling confident enough to start rolling the drones down. And there's a lot of play space to get control here down on the ground floor of where the sites are. You've got the stretches down towards dirt and oil off each other. There are these intel pockets, if you are unaware. That man with the bubble he now gets the third one. Maestro is able to have a little bit more coverage and control. The gun is pretty good in the right hands yeah. as well. It's not at its best, but at its best, it was literally a surgical tool. One could argue a little bit too strong for my yeah. liking, at least. I have my SMG 11 with 17 bullets, it's got 81. I'm like, it's not fair, man. Give me something more. The break on the hatch, you just sort of saw the trick there. If there's a Kaiyu claw, it will get exploded by any explosives that are close enough on the soft. They're able to quickly remove it. This, however, is possible to get unless you have this maverick. Burning his way across NJR, just gets that popped open. The thing is. 10 players, 30 seconds. This is about to turn into a massive brawl here, and there's got to be a lot of confidence in the calls of Dark Zero. You talked about it before, how these end of round moments matter. Well, this is the biggest moment of it to matter. 25 seconds. And as they start to push their way up with the diffuser towards dirt, towards this first engagement, they're just taking it as slow as possible because Muzi is the one under pressure inside blue. Cons gets Canadian. They get the kill and the kit cold inside the dirt tunnel at this point, and you're looking at a very long walk to even get that pick back up. Another body falls, another body falls, and at this point, a little bit too late for any of the NA lot to get, and a reverse, a flawless suffered by Dark Zero this time at the opening of the map. As far as problem solving goes, it can't get much worse because DC, they saw a lot of problems everywhere across the bomb site and didn't solve a single one of those. 
didn't get third control, didn't get blue control. They got the kitchen edge opened up, but didn't do anything with it afterwards. So it looked like they were seemingly just stalled out for time. And historically, Dark Zero, they are a team who always has to run very, very short in those late rounds on attack where they will only have, oh snap, 10, 20, 30 seconds left. Let's just kind of rush these last few steps. But that's where you stop making mistakes and things do not go your way. And in similar fashion to historic Dark Zero, that's what happened in the first round here in Clubhouse as well. Okay, the first is your lead in NIP. This is the first yeah. time I think they've led a series across the two days and the two games. I think G2 were able to get themselves a step ahead both times yesterday. They obviously won both maps. Here, they have an advantage. They have that first strike. Oh, no, they got the lead on one of the maps yesterday. Okay. But I'm pretty sure they did. I think they did. I don't have the exact score, but it was 277 yeah. losses. I, I, might have. I think on the 4 7 they got the first and then they started to go away. But either way, what can they do with it? Can they try and thread a couple of rounds together here? Because the more that they can do, the confidence they can build against a team like Dark Zero, who, let's be honest, when you have a major change, not just for the structure, but for the whole ethos of the team, there's going to be holes, there's going to be problems. And if they're not allowed to get the sort of ball rolling on a map like Clubhouse, it might fall into old habits. It might fall into, well, something that's easily uh, exploited. The hold at this point is at the top alongside the players, so they're not going to be leaving it as quickly as they did before. DZ start to get the hatches, some of the push probably towards. Yep, there it is, CC. Maverick in the burn. Yeah, there's an extension here from NIP to Holden Cash server. A little bit of three players, Psycho, Pino, and Moosey playing top red and server Cash itself. And easy again, because they're playing Maverick, they will have to go a little bit slower. It's easier to work with because it counters the Kaid, Mute, Bandit, whatever that might be in your way. But it just takes a little bit more time to go up or open any of those walls. So it's worth it in the long, long run, but it's going to make it seem like they're at a very slow pace. It's going to be okay. The worry is here, time. If it goes away from them, well, problems might pop up. Mainly Wizard, who is very deep, going on the sort of deep roam over towards the back end of Blue, and if he can get maybe behind Garage, behind a single player, if he gets a take, he can change things off, and Bolo is going to try and watch for it, so, well, they know. They had the drone with the watch, they can see the player hasn't slipped one way, Bolo's watching one side, Pamba's putting pressure on the other, but it's all time that's being wasted. They've got to go for the fight, and they lose the first Pamba. Took the drop, the blind out over the top, the motion against it. There's the trade at least. But still, that's about 30 seconds of attention that had to be paid towards the physical opposite end of the map. Yeah, and also I feel like they could have thrown out a flashbang when Pamus would drop the hatch as well to the kind of like blind wizard, but instead they just go for the dry drop, 50-50 gunfight, doesn't work out. So they pick up the pieces, but at a cost now. And a P heavily favored here. In Attack equal numbers, 4v4, 3v3, etc. Defenders will more often not be favored on the bomb side than that of the attackers. They have less things to worry about, less angles to worry about. And of course, they have the side, they have the tools, the attackers have to problem solve it. And with less manpower, with less utility, that becomes more difficult. 45 seconds, and it's ticking very quickly here. You're looking at around the same time on their previous execute. We all saw how that went. So, the difference is the bounce on the beast towards the back of Jim. Cons is forced out towards the corridor, trying to find just a single aspect, a single place that they can get themselves locked in on. Putting pressure either side of the window. They have some of the control here. Canadian on the opposite end is trying to just get this diffuser in. The hop comes through. Cons goes for the swing out. They're baiting the approach. They're behind the hard gym equipment. As Canadian's going to get this stuck down with barely any time left. Where are you, NIP, to try and stop this? The swing is too late. A post-plant situation out of something that they really shouldn't have been offered. They do lose Bolo, but... 37 seconds, that pressure of time works into their favor. Nafe with the lockdown, they gotta go for the hop out onto the windows because it's a lot easier to watch here for Dark Zero. Cons, he's thinking about the idea of it. He's going wider and wider, but the further he goes away from it, the further he goes away from the fight on the site itself with Psycho and Muzi trying to get some of the control. Dark Zero's underneath, Dark Zero's on top. Dark Zero is all over this round right now. Clubhouse, they're able to find one with the trade, but DZ. Do it with not much time left. Not much time, but solid all around the edges here. They're holding it vertically, like I said, outside the window, from afar, up close, etc. They're in the NIP's face, and time was slipping by. When you got the Grim open that was banned on Cafe, you have a new set of tools to work with, and DC just showed us why Grim is currently a meta operator. You have to love the story of Grim. Yes. <laughs> I remember when Grim first came into the game. Like, we went through a period of... 
little bit of worry with operators. Yeah. You would see new ops come in. You would see this sort of performance and be like, uh oh, this is going to be broken. This is going to be powerful. Grim went, oh, okay. Mm. Hey, Grim. Yeah. I think it was W7M with the first team that ran Grim that I cast. They didn't even. Oops, they didn't even use the bees. Mm. They just sort of fired them and then ran a different direction. Um, and it was funny because you would say, "Ah, oh, the bees were part of the play." <laughs> yeah. Wow. I saw Grim legitimately banned yesterday as a good move, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, "Damn, mm. this was not the case like 12 months ago, eight months ago." I mean. Gotta love it. Gotta love some grim leader. Yeah, and I mean, this has happened a couple of times now. Where same thing with Lesion. Very high presence right now in professional yeah. playing play. And you go back only, uh, you know, six to 12 months ago, Lesion was played occasionally when you had space for him in the lineup, but you wouldn't make space to fit him in there for the majority of rounds. So small changes, yet impactful changes, will change the pick rate and win rate of operators quite drastically. It's it's really funny when sometimes it'll be unexpected ones as well. Because mm. on paper, you would look at that Grim Chains and be like, oh yeah, they could be more use of it. Yeah. And then you use it and you're like, oh. Damn. Oh, mm. this is broken. <laughs> you know, occasionally there's big ones. You, grenade change. Huge. Yep. Um, but to be honest, it sort of had to be because an operator having grenades or not was the deciding factor on whether they would be brought at all, unrelated to anything other than their ability or their gadget. It was... Mm. They have grenades. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, we need one. Now, it's fun to sort of see lineups where there are no grenades. The, yeah. the pick rate of that utility as a preference versus every other in the mud. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could say there's more creative flexibility now. And that, that's more reminiscent of like 2018, 2019 personal seats where, yeah, you might need like two or three operators as your core, but the rest can be spread within depending on like what you want, what you prefer. That's why we see now like oh. Monty Bravo all of a sudden, right? Why? Well, it's a part defense. There's <gasps> all failed. They're so close. Far away. Oh, wizard Wait, shot it oh, anyway. Oh, he thought he hacked it still. Thought he hacked it. He heard shot the drone. It. Oh boy. I mean, to be fair, you think it's gone through. That was yep. as gone through as it was. Still, it happens. They get rid of the echo drone. Now they can see if they can try and get their way into the site. So on this, this is the plant and the yeah. play. The Canadian's going to roll on through. Cons does get one. We've oh, seen this kills. shield suffer before, but this time they have the cover. But Cons is able to get one on the back of it. The Echo doing everything they can, but they don't want to sit without anywhere else for them to go. So now stuck. Canadian's gone deeper than you otherwise usually would for the plant. They're concerned about the push and the pressure round on the back end of it. They could just try and reverse shield, get their head down and get this tucked on the corner. But they think they can get one more kill before they go for it. They're worried that someone might rotate onto the second story. So NJR has done just that. And then gone down one more level thinking, well, nobody's there. There is at least a single player. If they take the drop on this hatch, if they play this last bit of verticality, Psycho is the sort of difference maker in this situation. Interesting. Now they go for the plan. Vertical can't see them. No Yoka drones. This might go down. Nave gets Fuzzy, gets activity. the cover, gets the post plant. And there it was, as I said, all that pressure on stopping that plant was from that verticality. There wasn't an attempt to rotate around the back. And I'm not going to entirely point the finger at a single NIP player, but that's not supposed to happen. We've seen players tuck this and steal it before. He's going for the whole swing. Somebody stop him. Somebody stop him. They no. cannot. No. What an absolute snafu. And <laughs> Moosey cool as you like. As he watches the team just pull that back. As I said, it's not the first time we've had a player steal that defuse. We've had it happen immediately after the plant before in the same smoke. But DZ will be beating themselves up about that round. They will because when you think about it, they have so many different easy solutions. If NGR on the Thermite, who is covering Troy out of the double door, goes to the pool table double window, he can jump in with a direct line of sight towards that diffuser from a different angle. You'd see it right here if Troy with the Monty stayed inside the room to apply pressure and visual confirmation. He too could get something done. So there are so many solutions here for DC, which they should know, but no one really thought about it. Oh, it's fine. Bomb went down, right? We win now. Easy peasy. But no, if you plant in a poor position where there is a blind spot, things like that will happen. When I Peter said, you know what? I don't think they got this covered. Let's just stick to the fuse. I mean, it's such a gamble as well. But at the same time, that position, there is so much pressure on just sort of keeping an eye on it. That's mm -hmm. what you sort of talk about when I was talking about the vertical is that's the only eye you can cleanly keep on it yeah. at this moment in time. It's covered by smoke, sure, but you can still sort of spray towards it. They lost it. 
just as important to post plant because you've tucked it onto a corner. It's not that that position is the easiest for you to watch in a post plant in terms of being directly onto it. What it's good at is watching the rotate. You can sort yeah. of catch the hatch, catch anyone that walks across kitchen from far away, unless you miss the first bit of rotation. Then suddenly they're in a position where they are safe unless you have to send it all the way in. But, well, will one round be the difference maker? If it is, that'll definitely be one. That'll be the one. Bit of haste, Pamba. Catch the bottom of the blue player here and hope that they would force them to a rotated Canadian. The Osa shield. Now, they're going to make sure that they don't die here. There's a that forces the motion. They don't go all the way, but Canadian does use it to get in and somehow gets the fight there against Wizard. Pamba's able to find Psycho who wanted to maybe offer some support on the rotation. Dark Zero gets two players. There's one in Garage, which they might not know about, but they take the oil, rotate, or they sort of go up and cause problems later. That is down to the drones to work out. There are not many scenarios now where grenades are high value, but the way that Troy utilized them in that specific instance was really good. Forcing movement from Wizard to jump in the window and take the fight, kind of with Pamasu on the hatch, was phenomenal. Yeah, it's a 50-50 gunfight in the end of things, but it allows the entry. The Oxir can progress throughout the map, and they're actually really quick in the pacing of this round now because they got half the round to play with, they've got two opening kills, and it's Solus and Kaid, so active gadgetry on both of those operators. Whatever, they lose Nafe. The primary harbinger that could speed things up has now been slain. Getting this kitchen edge opened up might be difficult, so now it's problem-solving time for DC in this final minute. Final minute is a worrying word, especially on this site, but at least they've been able to take two bodies before they go for the push. As you said before, problem solving was that sort of final line that they wanted to get over that last bit of a hurdle. Here they've got a little bit of problem solving. Pamba might be able to find one more fight. They have the pings on how close the player is, Muzi! A very dangerous rotate, but he has to be back in the site and he's able to at least make it happen. He will be much more shaky in whatever engagement comes forward, but Canadian. With this, the Talon Shield can sort of force a bit of motion. However, oh. it's a long deploy. The impact goes out. Troy has to pull his way back in. Canadian's going to pull that out of his pocket. Now has to go for a second strike. 15 seconds wasted. Time is getting further and further away from them. It's turned from what was a very quick approach towards the kill on blue to now a last second push onto blue. The single player in dirt once again on the far side of the push. They've got to try and win out. They do not bolo. Goes down inside dirt, which means Cons can rotate his way back up towards blue. 10 seconds. They're just trying to force it onto Moto at the same second. The fight goes out the tray, but it's the man with the kit that's gone cold. They don't have the time to try and hold it down. And Muzi with a triple gets an IP for the second time. Just a lockdown on the last 15 yards of the approach here of Dark Zero. Yeah, and it's again where it's like, I feel like Dark Zero, they have better things to be doing in these rounds when you got man advantage. Yeah, okay, you lose Ibana, but you have more manpower. So forcing blue to one person dirt, you're always creating your own weakness here. By having one soul player on one side of the map, a ball on side of third tunnel, if he loses his individual gunfight to Khans, who's on a heater right now, by the way, nine kills, you lose all your pressure from that side of the map. That leaves just three people instead of blue, maybe a guy motor door, but it's very weak areas to enter the building from. So I don't like this approach from Dark Zero. They're calling a timeout, which I think is a rather good time for it. You got two more rounds in the first half, you can tie things up 3-3, three, three, and Mint, the coach, can talk to his players be like, guys, relax, chill, this is not what we practiced, because if that is what they have been practicing, they wouldn't pick up, because this is not a good look right now. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's definitely bringing a couple of questions onto the sort of drive of things, but they opted to start on their attack. They opted to try That's and fair. make things happen, and they've now taken time out on attack as well. So you don't know if the conversation is more towards the clarity of comms, we're getting into our own heads again, or if it's more of a general, we need to win more of these attacks. Mm. Whatever the balance is, it's something that they need to wreck on emotional or statistical in the game. Here, I mean, this was obviously where they're able to pull off the only round when they've got so far. It was a plant. They should arguably have two. Yeah. Before we even get into the semantics of how they could have changed things for the last. Here, they might be able to still get themselves the start of a drive towards an even half. They're well aware of that. And that could be that sort of flag that they're waving saying, if we don't get this, we're going to be battling on the decider. I will say I love when teams they play like Clash and Monty, but I hate when it's a top flagger. Who does it? Icons right. 9 and 2. 
why on earth is he playing attacker? Right? And it's probably a matter of like none of the other NIP players are happy or comfortable to play that particular operator. Yeah. But still, like, if Psycho is 0 and 2, Kons is 9 and 2, you would think Psycho playing Clash would be the better statistic. <laughs> yeah, no. I think that's always the, the sort of driving force of it. The joke was obviously the classic of you've been promoted to Jaeger, you've yeah. been promoted to Doc. <laughs> Here, you have to do a responsibility. You, It's not a matter of just putting yourself in position. You develop holds, Kons is on the Clash on this yeah. hold, whether they're 9 to 2 or 0 to 2. Yeah. But as you said, there needs to be, if someone's on their day, the current meta, the current game is one where all 10 players should be able to shoot. There's no mm. hard supports in this game anymore. You've got to be able to bring the game and I guess that movability, that change, is that criticism of NIP. They haven't quite been able to get that the same way that, say, for example, the 7M, Phase or Liquid or G2 can yeah. juggle operators and responsibilities depending on how they're doing throughout the game itself. One minute is gone that might happen down here. Psycho only really has one route out of this room. How aware of it Pamba is. Because they're about to find out because Psycho is looking for it. Sees a drone. Is that a bait on the drone? There's no way. Oh, please be a bait. The impact. That's genius, actually. Didn't want to give the game away. It's like there's something wrong in this scenario. So, yeah, 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 Something's fishy. That's actually massive. Like, when we talk about, like, the skills of players, there are so much that we... You can't like always like talk about or, or see there, but Psycho's game sense to read that this might be a bait, this might be a risky situation. I will spend an impact instead of just walking into that room. Massive in that round because now it's a 5v5. They keep the member alive and Panda has wasted so much of his own time waiting for nothing to happen. Polo does find one and the buck can start getting some work done here. But as he said, a lot of times pass to help on this push. There's another single player inside the side and they're backed up by Clash oh. Cons. Driving their way forward, but it's a very awkward approach here because of that breach on the left-hand side. They cannot go any further than that. They've got at least a bit of a blind from Wizard's Pocket Fenrir to stop Pamba getting a scream up red, but they're about to find the Clash at the bottom of it. The Clash onto the back end. They'll just sort of stop it. Again, 10 more seconds wasted. Half, if not the whole drive of the team is over on this side. They're just torn apart by Pino. Gets two on the approach. Bolo blinded by Fenrir. It's Nafe who steps in on the back of the bees. The Solace, who was once almost caught, now has some support on the left. Pino with his third for the round as Bolo goes down. They at least got rid of the clash, but they haven't been able to find anything close. I don't know if they know about the Solace, but they're gonna find out very soon if they step through this door. NJR is looking for a route, and they just hit a brick wall on this approach here. And they did, they got shut down in so many different ways, vertically with drone tonight. They have one drone to their name. They have no intel right now for DC. And that's the big pain right now. They don't know where these players are staying at. Psycho is able to get NJR on the swing. Nafe is inside the site, but with five seconds and alone, he at least wins out one engagement. But they know they just got to play time, and that's NIP getting out of there. The cleanest round win I think they've had so far, because let's be honest, when there's a minute left, they still have all of that in place and the clash. Yeah. What do you do at that point? Because brute forcing your way through leads to what it led to. I mean, there's always the, uh, the features position, right? Yep. You lay down, you curl up, you cry, <laughs> you give up, essentially. And I'm not saying DC they did that, but it might have been even easier for them if they just, like, surrendered that round. I mean, the biggest issue there is they have Emisu and Buck below, breaking the floor apart, towards where the Romans are inside of CC Cash, but they didn't buck any players, didn't get any of those skills because they only had one drone left in the name, likely a flank drone. So you're bucking blindly thinking, okay, I don't see anybody, I guess it's clear. What do you know? There's like three or four defenders there fighting back, just walking into your face and catching you by surprise. Pino on the kite getting two kills, immediately stopped Dark Zero. Now they're down 1-4, that's right after taking their technical timeout. They have no breaks left, they can only go forward here. Only NIP can call, you know, a timeout now, so... You see they gotta figure it out, aim for a 2-4 half, then go on to defense. Half to the back of the timeout as well, as we sort of said it before on the previous map. The timeout led to that success that led them through here. I mean, things are gonna get a little bit stressier when it doesn't quite go into their favor. It's a 2 half, they might find themselves suffering the same distance and difference that NIP had to rebuild from on the previous map. A pure trait of who's able to take as much blood from the other on their map pick and their map selection. The mirror extension here, a, a heftier sort of stretch towards Jim. You will see that more of an exploration towards the bedroom, towards logistics, towards the opposite side of the second story to maybe bait them into clearing it, force a construction take. You assume CC will get popped open. Yeah. You assume there'll be some pressure around Garage. 
here that much dedication with the mirror windows as well. They're really sort of saying, look, come and find us. Yeah, and also they're P being flexible now. They're playing mirror, they're playing the clash again. They're kind of showing us a bit more of their playbook, if you will. Maybe realizing at the cafe, they need to show more in general <laughs> yeah. to find some success here. If you play a very linear style of Siege, you become predictable. You know, you see the lineup, you see the bombs, and you go, guys, they're gonna have like, one guy playing this corner, one guy in that corner, let's kill them, right? Now you see this go, I'm not sure what they're gonna do now because it's the first time, at least for this series. The weight of the table as well, the importance mm. of how things come together if NIP find themselves suffering not only two losses, but on the back of just four maps. The round difference for that is really horrible. And round difference can be the decider of who stays and who goes home because NIP's loss to G2 yesterday was more dire than the loss of Rex off G2. Psycho does get Bolo here. Gets that opener, another time that that's a statistic going into the favor here of NIP, and they've been able to make it work when they don't get that. So, let us step through. Canadian wants to go for the drop and drive here onto Logi Hatch, but he needs Pamba and Nath to offer some support. And there's Pamba getting that first. There's the drop, the return onto Canadian, caught out by Cons. The mirror window player is still in position, sprays oh. through, and that Fenrir has entirely been destroying them. I said it, but it was causing them problems on their approach to the previous map, the Skeleton Key. Opening the heart of the player. There is one still in the back of Jim. It's Pino. But no, he's been able to drift his way back even whilst blinded. The three NIP players back towards the site. But 45 seconds, a three versus three. I mean, Pino navigated the okay, entire, like, room of Jim, Master Bitterman Construction, fully blinded, by the way. That's incredible. <laughs> I was like, yeah, he's in Jim, right? No, no, no. He's way off the other side of the map now. That's phenomenal stuff. And now in a P, they're playing the smart. They're playing far back on site. The feet sees, <gasps> though. The feet sees. They're exposed. Oh, no. The feet sees. They're able to put them in a bit of a dire situation. But two players in 20 seconds. They can still try and make a bit of magic happen. And there's the start of it. Muzi, a huge clutch player, gets one. Gons goes oh. deeper and deeper, but cannot quite get the connection. The rotate onto the window as the hop through the one versus one. With 10 seconds left, NJR with the kit. And a hell of a fragmite gun behind him. Throws the drone over to one side just to get a read on the save, oh! but he gets the kill! And JR dips against Muzi and gets them their second round. There he is. We talk about this man so often. He's on support. He plays Thermite. He doesn't necessarily always get to entry. But when he has to step up, when he has to go for those kills, he usually finds them. This is a player who is playing a role where he might actually be better at something else, but it works for Dark Zero and it works for NGR. DC, they get the 2 4 half. Uh, they desperately needed it, let's they be did. honest. If, if this had gone away from them, things would have been problematic. And the point I started to make there was if we get to a third map, please ban Fenrir. <laughs> yeah. It's causing them so many problems. It caused them problems on Cafe, and I said it at the time where, yeah. you know, they ban uh, NIP banned off Ying as a sort of sign of this is what we're struggling against here. Yeah. Dark Zero, yeah, you're not going against his army. NIP are playing this Fenrir so well. It stopped them on that approach. It kind of really messed them up on the previous approach as well because as soon as they swung the open sort of wall towards the top of red, oh, there's a Fenrir. They had to leave. They had to go back in. There wasn't another option for it. Or, if you're not going to ban it, then you have to pay it a little bit more respect. Mm. Go towards something that can get rid of it. Maybe a Flores if you've got to get it. You have the back of the drone. Maybe something that can steal it. Yeah. As you've done a little bit before as well. There has to be, for my money, just a little bit more respect paid towards how NIP is utilizing this gadget. No, I fully agree with you. And uh, and frankly, while the Fenrir is a problem, I do think that Dark Seal did a good job at problems from that round. You know, they, they walk in, one person flashing the mirror window, one person punching it, etc. So they're progressing, but you're right, like things are way more difficult than they, than they should be, essentially, yeah. because those Fenrir okay, mines are always in their way. But Clubhouse also, it's a it's a map rather where you want a lot of different operators, right? You want heart like a lot of heart reaching, or maybe the Monty, the IQ, whatever. It's hard to fit a Brava or a Twitch in your lineup. So this is also an MP being smart. You're utilizing an operator that is hard to deal with because of the operators that you want in your lineup that can't deal with Fenrir essentially. So it's smart stuff from NIP. Now they get to attack. They now have to problem solve those exact same problems on the flip side. NIP on this approach where things didn't quite work for them on the start of it was losing a Monty round one of the first map. Here Cons again. Off the roll where they get a gun and on the roll where the tactics is, Cons is our shield player. Cons will play the shield. Hmm. Will it work? 
They got away with it before because of the work that was done structurally to stop them, but it's much harder to be in that position where you're on the push. We've seen the struggles of it before. They can't get through the electrification on that as of this moment. They don't have the Maverick to play the trick here, so instead they can only really go for the hatches that can be opened outside the IE floors until they start doing some juggling work to assume onto the back end or playing against obviously, those property MPs that are both otherwise used by Psycho. And it's smart because normally the property MPs, they will not find the Kai Claw, but they've paired the IQ with them as well in Moosey, so they can get the scanner out, yellow ping exactly where the Claw is, then EMP with accuracy and guarantee the hatches to be opened up. So you might be thinking, why play IQ? There's no Valkyrie right now. Well, that's one of the reasons. It also counts Kai and it speeds things up for an MP, it gives them more access points, and they guarantee the openings of the hard hatches, which you need on Claw Plus. Yeah, pocket EMP is a very cool gadget that was introduced. Very, very tiny EMP radius yeah. to keep it balanced. So it's dead. Point perfect is necessary. What also might be necessary is putting your eyes towards the site itself. We criticized DZ for not really giving themselves a lot of time for problem solving the site itself. We're getting the first roots down into oil pit and into the ground floor in the basement itself here as Moose is just going to scream his way up. The pings are coming from the back of the bees. He's gone all the way into Lou. The pressure oh. onto Moto, but he's caught out in the trade. It's a four versus three. The Psycho double dips around the corner and they are absolutely executing Dark Zero. Woo. They had such a good read on where all of the players had got themselves tucked into and they tucked them right in a bed. And this is the thing, like when you have Grim for that execute, you get those red pings. Two or three players from DC's defense were completely marked for that execute, but also Latsam, Brazil as a region, they are so excellent at those exact kind of takes. You go in, you play off one another, and NIP back in their prime in like 2019, 2020, etc. That's the exact performance and play style. They excel that as well. They are so good at just getting in there, taking gunfights, trading positively, and just taking full control. They lost one member in that round. They killed all five of the DC's defensive players. I mean, as I said, you, you know, when you leave yourself not a lot of options, you got a problem solving. You sort of pointed out there, the play on the bees giving them the read, the play on the positions. Knew it. Knew it in advance. They knew where they wanted to put the pressure onto. Whether it's, you know, the sort of research on how that take goes or the hold that was put ahead of them. Either way, flawlessly put together the five-two at this point. DZ, they're traveling in a dangerous position here because they know at some point they'll probably have to end up going back to that site. Whatever happens again. So, can they try and make success on their second and maybe their third choice here? Because you've got to make rotations when you're this far behind. So when you defend on Clubhouse, you have kind of two primary ways to play. One is an extension, like we saw on IP. You defend Jim, you play in CCTV Cash, like DC are kind of doing here as well. The other is you play around Wald and I. Tuburu, you know, Bandit, Kaid, Mute, etc. And you make things as difficult for the attackers to get in the building anywhere. DC right now are a bit of a hybrid. They got the Bandit, sure enough, but that's not the main focus. They're still playing proactively. They got the Mira, the Finrear, they got the Solus. So clearly, Wald and I is a semi-priority, slow things down for NIP, but they also recognize they need good guns, they need gadgets to help stop their opponents because when it comes to a 1v1 brawl, NIP, they have sharp shooters, and Khan's off the monkey now, so the main gunner is now also back in action. You want to sort of see it, I guess, if you're an NIP fan, it's all yeah. like, Khan's, please! It's not shooting more, Khan's, get off the monkey, get Khan's, off the clash! Khan's go kill! Bolo is going to step into the shoes of the Fenrir. Um, you know, if there was a reason to say, well, even against all the hardships, we're not going to ban it. Now's the time. Going for the break here onto yeah. the mirror window. This is what you talked about with those ash charges. Mirrors become much trickier to get use of, and it's now smashed up the angles towards the opposite ends. They've still got some safety on it, but otherwise just being sprayed through the catch on the disc. The position cannot be played as extensively, so Nate goes for the rotate. There's some bees over the top that reveals his rotated position, oh. so instead he's going to tuck his way back in, but they're in! They're swinging, and Nafe is somehow able to get the security onto one, there's two! <laughs> Nafe whips out the secondary and pops the player. They went for a quick pace breach, but it's left Muzi a little bit isolated on the main brick stairs. There's pings on the rotate. There's the rotate that's coming around behind him as well. They're still trying to utilize this utility, maybe buy themselves a second, because look at a solace Canadian that's on the other side of the map going, I need to get myself a little bit closer here. If he retakes the control underneath, it doesn't matter how much damage they do inside. They've still got, obviously, a four versus three. He can mess around anywhere on this map. He's still alone. He slowed things down. Bought time for his team, but Navy's still in that heroic position with one HP left now. Three mirrors staring him down from outside the building. Will he drop or will he stick around? 
He's just got himself into a very dangerous place here. That gym equipment is the only solid thing really across these two sides. He cannot quite get the connection that he wants, but he buys a bit of danger in time. They're tucked. Psycho. Gonna see if he can get the reinforced wall as that little bit of protection, but they don't think they're safe enough to go for the plant and the play. So instead, they're gonna keep pushing. See if they can get the fight on the opposite end of this mirror window. Oh. Swings against it. Canadian needs to step in and does. Gets the kill on Tamuzi. Heyman offered some support round on the back, and there's oh. a bit of crossfire. Oh no, Psycho! Does get the kill onto Canadian. For some reason, goes and doubles down to cement the one more, but I guess when you're in the two versus one anyway. You want to make sure that they don't have the read. That's why they got the execute, but it doesn't really matter. As Bolo pops the corner and pops the player for the 5-3. to three. Chaos. Absolute chaos throughout that entire round. Nave gets a double kill and buys a full minute of silence in the server. But after that, it becomes a like straight-up brawl shortly after. And it's Dark Zero with the cover, the trades, the back and forth that ultimately wins it out. But if that's the round that DC are going to be winning, they gotta fight so hard every single time. And they need two more rounds just to tie things up. He had one bullet left. Oh, is it the last bullet? One bullet <laughs> left in the secondary on this. It doesn't have many to start with. Oh. But if one other player had come at him, it would have been a much earlier death as well. Obviously, this, oh. that is panic. If two players end up swinging the same angle at the same height, yeah. that is, we need to try to cement a kill. We know that there might be some danger here because we've suffered to it. We need to try and get revenge and get that trade. But it leads to workplace accidents. <laughs> workplace accidents, yeah. I mean, that's what it does. And it, it's a fine line between being too close together, risking a team kill, or being too far apart and giving your opponent freedom to get too isolated 1v1. So I don't blame them for doing that. It happens sometimes, of course, but it was not ideal. And it was one of the reasons why they might have lost that round. They didn't have enough manpower due to that team kill. And NIP... We're hovering a bit of different operators there. I saw a Blitz, I saw a Monty, yeah. but Khans himself also, I think, realizes that while the shield gets us forward, he does want to partake in these rounds more proactively with a weapon. I mean, it, it, it's the strange sort of argument that we like to make here, because I think he's 100% on the win rate for when he plays a shield Fair. currently, Yeah. but it, we're not in their comms. We cannot truly understand what they think is going wrong. It's been a great build back up from NIP's game, mm. from where things have gone wrong from them pretty on the first map, to how they fought back into it here, to where they've got the lead and they've made sure they sort of stayed that step ahead with a solid run in the middle of the previous mm. half. At this point, it's down to seeing if they can try and just find weaknesses and exploit them because they're doing that pretty well against these DC defenses so far. I'm not gonna lie, I thought they were gonna rush the bomb set there. They had a drone pretty sneakily inside of blue, like, okay, there's one person within sight, four roamers, we could just rush it, but they yep. said, no, <laughs> let's not do that. It's 5-3. <laughs> like, this is a pretty important round for both teams. Either you're going, you know, map point for NIP or DC. They're closing in uh, quicker. Well, Psycho does get Bolo. Oh, and Psycho God. gets one more spray through on the soft, just on the rotate. That's gross. Removes the player. And now it's just MJR and Pamba Sue. But Pamba, realizing that he needs to do some damage, gets the sex story opening. Not sure if that was just a Hail Mary in case someone else was watching or he wants that angle open to cause some problems later, but time will tell. The minute 20 and the fight is about to come around on the stair set. They can hear each other. Pamba suffers elsewhere though. His wizard stacks up to try and sort of say, look, you're not going to get away with another push and he doesn't want to risk it. Getting them from a, you know, five versus three into a four versus three is huge. Then letting that fall to a four versus two, you're just back in maybe even a worse one than you ever yeah, the thing about this base and bomb set is that there are so many pathways for attackers. Blue stairs, main stairs, bird, hatch tops, etc. You want at least three or four guns, ideally, to cover most of those areas. So, the less defenders available, the worse it really gets. NIP, they got the advantage, they got 45 seconds, but more importantly, four drones left available. Once they locate some of the whereabouts here... Oh god, what?! I think he climbed the ladder in garage, he must have. Yeah, he's come up oil pit, he's got the stab and oh, terrible news. And this is where NIP sometimes struggle. You saw cons go, do I go down red? Do I push it? No, Pino's got the fight. No, Pino doesn't have the fight. Nave, he's suddenly been able to swing this balance back. The silent what? killer from the UK gets the clear across it. Cons drops. In towards Mardo, is trying to find the swing. He's got a goo mine in his foot, so he's got to take that out before he plants anyway. And when you're planting in a two versus one, what else can you do? Throws the gadget, buys themselves a second of time, pops back up and goes for the rotate on the fight, but there it is! 
NJR takes care of cons! Beautiful stuff from Nave. I don't know how this man is doing it so consistently, always finding gaps, openings, and just appearing out of thin air, essentially, like a magician. He climbed the ladder, walked up, and then knifed to the back of the head, opened I mean, things up for DC. <laughs> it's just... Come on! It's terrible. It's terrifying. It's traumatic a little bit. You're, you're looking at what is a sort of blow, but it's a morale blow. It, it's this one where you're going, okay, we've got this, we've got the lockdown, we're cool, and oh, I've been knifed. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, what? And, it, and, and that is true. Like, being killed on a sneak on a roam is horrible. Yeah. Getting them close enough to knife, and then they pick up the player that came for the trade as well. That is full wheels off a tilter. I also want to just like uh, praise the observing there because it was like perfect cut, right? It's like, perfect. oh yeah, this bad for DC, etc. Slap, boom, knife. Okay, we saw all of it, and it was <laughs> there was like conclusion to what happened, but also the mystery. How did they get there, right? Because I didn't see that. No. no. So it was wonderful. Just want to praise the observing here. That's is it amazing? Go. Is it easy? I don't know. E if it's easy, spin. Five seconds left before it's insertion. Medic, spin. If it's red, like spin. Attacker's objective is to locate If it's a Nova, bomb. spin. It's Nova. It's Nova! Oh! <laughs> All right, Nova. First SI they have observed. Hell of a job. He makes a uh, memory in my book. That's for sure for that one. I, I hope they were excited about being like, I knew it's going up fourth. <laughs> I, I mean, it wasn't going to be fourth. I just sort of. He's smiling. Oh, Good. I'm glad. Boy. He's absolutely smashing it. The observing on this series, but Dark Zero oh, to mm. NIP, and now what do you do when the gap gets to this point? I mean, this is where we gotta talk about the mental war, like not the mental warfare, but the mental, I guess, checkpoint here for teams because we know Troy can tell his teammates, guys, Activate. it's fine. You know, Troy's been in a lot of Australians are casting Australia on history. They're popping off right They're now. They're popping off. <laughs> I was gonna say Troy's been in a lot of finals. And he's won, but he's also suffered the most amount of grand finals oh, losses. What? How, How do does he get away with that? With a Thatcher on the board. Yeah. With a Thatcher on the board, Nath has just bandit tricked the Selma. They didn't even double either side. And yeah. a Maverick? No Whoa. NIP. <laughs> no NIP. Damn. That's bad. Muzi gets Canadian underneath. And they're just going to have to try and strong arm the player against the bandit. They might just try and get a bit of damage done up and sort of say, look, you can't sit here. Oh. Okay, there we go. At least that's some revenge, but still. Shouldn't have got a trick off. Oh boy. I mean, when you got all the tools, but you can't get it done, you start questioning, like, what's going on? But they figured it out in the end. They get two kills, one the breach, one in the roam, a third follows down to Pembersu as well, and DC, they're just falling apart right now. And Jab with a great jump out, it's still a 2v4. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, the C4 went fishing, a two versus three, no. a two versus two, Bolo! He's ready to get himself a bit cooked into this series. We sort of said he's been a bit understated, yeah. but when you step back in to any team in any tournament, it doesn't matter because, you know, yeah, he's had the experience of holding the highest throne. He's had the experience of being the EVP or one of them of that tournament. Yeah. You come into this roster, you come back into it. The last time he played, well, it was against Dark Zero and it wasn't very good, but that was That's a true. step in last second. Then try and warm up to it. 40 seconds left. Psycho and cons. They're going to try and rebuild once again. If we suddenly find ourselves in a 5 to 5, well, then I think we're going to get an NIP timeout. I could see that happening for sure. And again, this NIP edit, they're the worst. They're 4v2 and things fall apart. They isolate themselves. You should here. Might do the work. It's NGR and Bolo up against Psycho and cons. Oh no, caught out. Forced into the position. Great play on the utility. Bolo. He's in the one versus two, but there's only 10 seconds. If he can try and isolate this into two fights, Ooh. the Maestro Bubbles are giving him the read. There's one and he's down. He's looking for the second. He Ooh. finds him, Polo! He's back low, baby! <laughs> A handshake from Mint saying, thank you very much, good sir. I love that you are here <laughs> with us. Beautiful stuff, really. And it speaks to the strength of Dark Zero, but also the weaknesses of NIP. And you are correct. I mean, they will call their tactical timer because things are falling apart. And that's to my point earlier, when you have Troy on your team, who's been in so many finals and won them, but been in even more finals and lost them. If anyone can keep your players and himself in check mentally, it's gotta be Troy. Or it's for NIP. We know they're an emotional team, so to speak. When things don't go well, they get frustrated. They're passionate about the game, right? Of course they are. But right now, it is slipping away. And I fear a little bit for them and their mental state. Well, the timeout 
conversation. I was told actually why the Australians were going insane. Okay. Insane. Apparently, Mowgli pulled off the sickest ace our producer has ever seen. That's pretty high praise. So I'm I'm excited to uh, get, get, get eyes that. on that at the end. We'll get a replay. I'm sure we'll be on the social soon enough as well. But to be fair, Bolo coming in with that quad kill is just as much. I was going to say. On our stream, what a moment for him to pop off. And as he said, two rounds in a row, two tilters. When you are up with a two-person man advantage and it goes away from you twice in a row, mm. horrible. Do you know when else that happened? What? The first, uh, two of the first three rounds NIP played yesterday against ah. G2. One of them was Benjamaster tearing them apart with a 4K, and one of them was Alamau and Uno pulling it back as well. On club, I think. Oh, but, no. And, it, and it's sort of this moment of like, I said this might happen again. It's happening again. Oh, boy. NIP, you got work to do here. Yeah, keep saying it's a long tournament. Fiends can still be fixed, but you want to start off as hot as humanly possible. Dark Zero, they have been close to overtime in a couple of their maps so far, but they usually have escaped it and won or lost in regulation. If they win, next couple of rounds, they will once again avoid that OT. But right now, they're on the right path. They've won the last three rounds in a row, two of them, as you said, being clutches. Now it's tied up. NIP had the timeout. They talk things through. Let's see if they can change this ship around. Yeah, it's to break momentum as much as it is to have this conversation, but it's a conversation that Dark Zero can have as well because, yeah, they shouldn't have won those two rounds. They did. They take that energy. They take that momentum. They put it into the conversation of, look, we are doing this against the foot. We can drive this home. This can be our carry on and other emotional words you know. <laughs> They're going to be throwing through the mics into each other's headset. Nafe, when he played this power position before and was able to pop a couple of bodies, is on a slightly different operator, not giving them the sort of chance on the mirror break, the chance on the pressure here. Instead, it seems like a different take. Anyway, the wall gets opened, as it often does with Jacuzzi. But look at this, the change of focus, where they struggled with the positions of the Dark Zero players last time around construction, around CC. This time, they're cutting it in half, paying a lot of attention towards yeah. that side of the map. I like this. I, I call this like phantom pressure where you open jacuzzi breeds, construction breeds, some windows, some doors. If you're Dark Seer right now, especially out the Valkyrie, you don't know exactly where this push will be coming from. You gotta feel out the map right now and figure out, okay, what might be the pathway right now for the opponent. And again, another wall gets opened up, but no one's here. Instantly, Wizard drops down below. So, Dark Zero, if they move a little bit too much, they might be caught off guard. And that's someone like Canadian who does move around a lot. He tends to die early in those moments. Amber's holding on with the pre hell C4 ready on the lineup, hoping he can get a bit of audio of anyone that might go for the breach here in the approach onto the CC balcony. It's cons with the kit and the thermite as well, but said with all that's already open, it's not as big of a loss. The C4 comes out, the swing oh. doesn't quite net the rewards. Cons, he's able to step in as the fight goes into Bolo's favor, still on the tear from the previous round and still with some structures to support him. Wizard suffers next on the swing. They're watching that window on construction, so anyone that tries to escape, this is going to get dropped. But, I mean, we're in the sub-minute time. They have to try and get rid of Bolo. The pressure's on him. The first flash doesn't net it. The blind, the second, either. They're dabbling with it. That one will, but he swings into it and finds the kill before he gets taken out. Finally, Psycho screams up red stairs. But there's half a minute left at this point. They've only just been able to get control of the back end of it. They've still got the site itself to apply pressure. Canadian tucks behind the desk. Overlord G office is waiting to take them by a bit of surprise. They've hopped out onto the windows. The bees to buy them a little bit of space in a three versus three. 20 seconds. Wizard finally makes the last steps through. The plant is going just on the other side of the bed. They're going to go for the cover and support. There's Wizard getting Canadian. There's the attack on the zip. They get one. What's the second drop down with the Maestro Bubble? The two versus two. Nate has one impact in pocket. Wizard has one route to run, and he's just going to try and get himself tucked further and further away. They're going to hold on. They think that they're not going to watch it. We've seen a thievery of a plant like this before. Oh. We see it once more. Twice in the game. Both teams had a ninja defuse, and NTR hopped on that evil line. The Maestro came quite late in the round, but he saw that crucial intel. He saw Hibana drop down the hatch and leave the area so they can deduce there's one or deduct rather there's one person in construction one person dropped downstairs you can retake and go and just cover the diffuser it's free nip when things are really dire when they're really stressed and pressured they make these micro mistakes with massive outcome on the round like not having a strong post plan just like we saw from dark zero and bowler early on he knows <laughs> he might have died but he got two kills and he stalled so much time 
Job well done. I mean, truly doing some huge work over the past couple of rounds. As I said, it's a player who we know the capabilities of, not just from how they've played with previous rosters, but how they've played in this tournament. Yeah. He is an SI veteran with more sort of accolades than even other people who have lifted the hammer because he got the double down with statistical performance too. There is no one else that you sort of go, oh, who can we get to bring into this role? Oh, well, we have, you know, a champion who is one of the best players in that tournament. Oh, yeah, get him on the line. And to get him to start to get comfortable, to get used to the new sort of meta, it's great to play there. Again, it, it's this push here from NIP. They did great to adapt to what went wrong last time. Yeah. However, when the round is going great and they're able to get into this position, that sort of late half game, the post one going wrong, is it three times now we've seen that advantage just filter away because of a pluckiness that DZ has. It's got to be so sort of demoralizing. Absolutely. I mean, it has to be. And to make things worse now, DZ, they're a match point, series point for that matter. And it's a very stable, very cookie cutter kind of lineup for them on the basement, right? They got the Warden's kind of smokes, they got the Mirrors to make things difficult, and got smoke from Pampampasu to shine a plant. NIP, they have one trick up their sleeve. They've not shown it yet. Glass, Psycho. Back when Glass first got the belt to see through smokes, Psycho was one of the first players that people genuinely feared on this operator because he was so phenomenal at playing the DMR and just beaming people down. NIP can get to the side, all five players alive. They have one set of smokes on Glass himself. They could enable the full potential of him to carry this round if they can get through in time. Alphan is almost burnt now. They've just entered the building, starting to open up those hatches. Go through those motions, but they lose oh, Moosey no. early to Nave. That's not what they want to happen. Nave just causing problems. Every single round it feels like. I know, and there again, Nave gets the kill on Moosey on the Sword of Adam Ariel Blue Stairs twice. This time a very different story, but when you are this close to the end, this close to losing your second series, this close to losing your fourth map, and seeing that distance grow ever wider between you and the top of the board and the top of the group, you know how hard the fight is going to be and you're following two play days in the following two games. A minute left. Reach onto the hatches. The buck is going to try and just force a pocket of space and get some clarity on towards this plant. They've got themselves stacked up. DZ, they're watching it from A-Case. They have a warden, as you said, but that might come here together on the cover of any of those smokes if they try and drop them into the plant and just try and find a little pocket because... Well, the downside of those gadgets is you got to sit and wait for it to activate. If you know they're going to fall through a small hatch, you know where to aim. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, without the Grimpies, you have less intel to work with. There's still five, four drones now for NIP, but you're playing a man down. NGR playing that AK's position. Crucial's position to play in, of course. Got to see where NIP will strike and when they will go. They go for the drop. They go for the hold. You can hear a Thorn Gadget does most of cons, but the C4 gets the end of it. Five to three, five to two, and another C4, and another NJR! Psycho cannot find anything! We start the series of flawless, and apparently we end the same way. Oh boy, DC, they were heating up. They had a couple of moments on top of us where I thought, this is not the same team we saw earlier today on Cafe, but they figured things out about the halfway point in this match, and all of a sudden, then I peep. It looked like they did yesterday against G2. They do not have Clubhouse figured out for themselves. It had to be a bit of five of Dark Zero. Canadian in his old age is probably <laughs> getting even older with how many series this team plays that ends up in OT or close yep. as possible to it. But for all the scraps and scrapes that get them in this position, they find themselves still getting that victory. Will it be a new meta that gets them victory of the tournament? long test but at least it's still getting them these win on maps and IP unfortunately got a fight today but it's still not enough well, they got a long way to go and, and just a fun fact DC played five maps now zero overtimes both losses and wins they've been clean regular it's a different team I'm telling you what unheard of for years DZ fans okay? can you believe this DZ fans they, they are so relieved at home you know that oh my god they're winning or losing regulation this is amazing stuff happening right now I mean, it, it's that sort of two sides of the story here. As I said at the start of the series, these are two rosters that could both do a decent run at this tournament. But they'll lift the hammer, probably not the favorites, but not an impossibility. However, 
this is how the story goes. There's two sides to the coin. It has to be the other one for the opponents. And here in IP, that, that's two days in a row that unfortunately for them, they've just not been able to get anything out of all the hard work. Yeah, and I mean, I guess to talk about, like, there's five teams in this group, and you just gotta be not to pass, you know? If you yep. can be bottom four, fine, if you're fifth, yeah, you're going home. So while things are looking dire for them, they do have a lot of you know, space to work with. It was a lot of these little moments as well. You, you sort of, yeah. I, I said it on the one round when Dark Zero lost it in the first half of, if this is decided by one round of not covering that post plant, nice they will hate themselves. <laughs> yeah. And then it's the other side of it where an IV suffer a stolen and injured a fuse. And, it, and it's just, that's how close it is. That's how close the wire is. If they had watched that, they might have got to OT. You might have been able to get to map three, but you otherwise would have been able to do some of the deficit. It was as close as it could be, but still, as I said, although there are expectations for them to perform well against a PRX, who are, let's be honest, they're probably the riskiest one with the most prove at this tournament yeah. after they lost today. But also they put in the start of a good performance. We saw some spark there and you never really know how the game is going to go until it's today. No, you don't. I mean, yeah, a lot of rounds are close, but DC did win five out of six rounds, and there was five rounds in a row on that late half. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, when that happens, you feel the momentum as a opposing team of NFE just slipping away. And you're like, what do we do against this, right? Okay, we have a good round, Bolo Clutches, right? Okay, good round, NGR makes a hero play. What are we supposed to do about this, right? It's difficult to deal with emotionally as a team. And wait, we see there, he drops the hatch. Small Bad. things DC to figure out, but they have massive consequences for an IP. It's the beauty of the calls as well. You sort of said it at the time when you have uh, sort of Nafe and you have Canadian working together on those calls, yeah. magic happens. I mean, together they have a 200 EPS. So, <laughs> that, <laughs> to get, I mean, you, you combine Nafe and Canadian, you've got what, 16 to, uh, you got almost the one point Canadian. Yeah. They balance each other out. It's yin and yang. Yeah, they do. Yes, that's literally <laughs> it. And Nafe also took like 27 kills over two maps, so they're 15 and 13 kills, so to speak. So he had Honestly, a phenomenal performance. He's a silent killer. Yeah. And, and you love to see it as someone who's watched the player come up through the UK scene, as someone who's watched the player play with a lot of rosters. And you know when you watch him play, he is one of the best support players in the world. He's a huge brain. Here, we sort of get this stretch of it. Nafe, that over the two map, massive, massive performance. I mean, you, you just wouldn't have expected it looking at this roster and going, Nafe's going to be leading no, the KD. No, I really <laughs> wouldn't think so. But at the same time, we got to talk about NP, right? Because they have players just not really showing up. I mean, Pino, Moosey, at Is Moosey first of April? November 18th. <laughs> oh, first of April, yeah. He's got dates on there. <laughs> Moosey, yeah. Moosey stats. Uh, uh, Are they so bad that they're not even on the board? <laughs> put that into your forms, Fresh. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when, when your injuries from NIP, they don't show up. When people aren't getting their kills and getting things done, then you know they're in for a bad time because when support players are playing the best, or flexibles are playing the best, you gotta figure out what the problems are. And it can be two things. Either the supportive team are not helping the entries, the entries simply aren't hitting their shots. Yeah, and obviously I think that's the sort of statement as well. You, you'll see the entry statistic from Nave. There, there we they go. Are. There we go. Uh, the entry statistic is something where obviously cons 5-0 to zero over the series. Yep. But the comparison against Nafe, who's playing that backline role, he's a support player, hitting 5-1. to one, and, and as you said, it's the perfect argument of is the jobs being done or is this filling in the gaps? For Nafe, I think it's opportunity. He, he's mm. seeing these moments that he can take advantage of and he's having a blast with it. Again, the sort of split of plants, it wasn't a huge objective-driven game by these two teams. They can be very objective-driven. I mean, I think it, it's, as I said, it, it, there's a lot of food for thought here for both the teams, but in very different positive and negative ways. Absolutely. I mean, I, mean, I just know from personal experience, if I have a Warden player on my team going like negative four in entries and like, like negative seven on like the stat line, I'm like, you're off Warden duty. Like, give me that role now, right? Like, you're off that, buddy. That was sadly Moosey in this game. Yeah, I think, again, when you see the capabilities of these teams throughout the year as well, you see what gets them to this position. You know, as I said, that they, they haven't been entirely quiet. They've had good moments, they've had good games, they've had games, they've been able to really light the wood on fire, but they're looking like they're willing to scrap the fight for every single map, every single round, which is something that you cannot get rid of. And here is that Ooh. horrifying divide I talked oh, about. Oh, yeah. So G2 and Dark Zero are now so many points clear of both Ninjas in Pajamas, uh, who have lost two games, and Firex and Geek 8, who have lost a game each. And this is that moment where you go, okay, 
NIP still have to play Fear X and GK. Yeah. Can definitely get out of that position. But you're chasing two teams that even if they win both of those, they might still clear you just on round. Yeah, that's the thing. Like you're you're not making like top two for NIP anymore. Exactly. You, you just kind of cleared that fifth spot. And I mean, when people, when fans, they look at this group, they go, Fear X is probably going to go home first. That's like the logical argument. I yeah, think yeah, most yeah. Would they're, make. they're the lowest rated seed yeah. of anyone in the tournament. Yeah. Statistically, you have that understanding of so, and then right now, I mean, they're clear off it, but that's because in a P, they've really had a tough couple of games. Fierix themselves have not proven that they deserve to be top four, but neither has an IP yet. Yeah, and this is the sort of spread now for NIP. They will be desperately watching Fierix, they'll definitely watch watching GK yeah. and going, look, we just need to be them. one of them to survive, but we got to still beat them by a decent distance because mm. their gameplay needs to improve if they want to survive much longer than just the lower bracket, they're probably going to end up in. Oh, absolutely. So, it is. It is what it is. What it is. That's what they say. It's been a pleasure chatting yes. with you. Yeah. Thank you. It's been nice Absolutely. to work with a European who knows how to speak English. I mean, you'll have a joy of having plays, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just setting you up to oh, meet one. man. Him. He'll understand. But it's been a pleasure here on the B stream. The next will be have taking over my seat and then Park and Mangu will be rotating. I think we might have an Intel moment. I'm assuming that'll get yes, popped up in a moment. The Show the replay. replay. Give us the replay. Him. Oh, it was Nate. Oh, oh, of course. Even with not he being able loss. to get it. I, oh, we get it in slow mo. So he gets the two. Look at that. Bang. Bang. No idea. Bang. Smoke. No idea. Oh, I like to think we, we it don't. Out. Yeah. We don't know what happened. We don't know what happened. Oh. It could have been. He might have won it. Defining moment. Anyway, that's all for us. It's been a pleasure. We will see you back on the stream in about 20 minutes. Here we go.